Hello there, welcome back to Quick Resume Podcast. This is episode 32. Thank you so much for coming. Boy, boy, what an episode we have today. There's there's Halo, uh, there's, there's some more Halo, and then if you're feeling a bit left out, there's a little bit more Halo after that. And then of course there's like Forza Horizon, you know, catching up with all yeah, of that. Boring, um, boring yeah, shit. some stuff happened. Phil said something about Elder Scrolls 6, like whatever that is, I, I haven't heard it of it. Like a, but a car game came out. I can't, yeah, I don't know, but well, you know, we will we will talk about it nonetheless. Um, but that's the gist. This is this is two weeks in the making. Obviously, this is coming off the back of um, the anniversary last week, and we skipped the episode then as well because we just figured we'll get our hands on with Halo. We'll come back. We'll chat about that. Um, because there's going to be so much to talk about the campaign previews. Holy shit! Yeah, because when when was the anniversary event again? When, uh, when that was that Monday. Monday, yeah, because we were thinking about doing the show on Tuesday because you work late on Mondays, mm. um, and we were like, oh, let's just do the show on Tuesday, you know, ke- um, because we we ended up missing the the Sunday, and we wanted to talk about what happened at the anniversary event, and then what happened at the anniversary event is what ended up delaying us because we were like, yeah, exactly, we just want to fucking play Halo all week, yeah, <laughs> we just <laughs> we're just talking about that. That's true, but yeah, that is that is definitely the case. But we, we also wanted to have hands on time to actually be able to speak about it. But anyway, yeah. like if you're new here, my name's Deck. I'm feeling fucking energized. I'm wearing a Christmas sweater. Feeling good, man. Ooh. Tim, buddy. Hi. How are you doing Hi. over there? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm not wearing a Christmas sweater. You're really ki- you're really into the uh, the whole Christmas season already, aren't you? You got your tree up. You're wearing Christmas sweaters. Yeah, I, I never. Do you know what? I never. When I, I I never told anyone this, but when I was younger, I kind of didn't give a shit about Christmas. You know, I, I just sort of I didn't care. Like, you know, it was whatever presents. You know, a bit selfish because you know you're a kid. But as I've gotten older, I actually really I really enjoy the whole festivity around it. I hate the taste of Christmas. Yeah. I was saying this yesterday. I hate the taste of Christmas, which is weird to me like Apple, i feel like cinnamon yeah. cranberry oh. fuck off but cranberry Just... can fuck off but <laughs> apple and cinnamon can stay <laughs> you can have a nice little threesome I, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I do. You know, I I don't mind cinnamon, but I just my problem is is that like everywhere I go, like they're trying to cram those three ingredients into every, and it's like, hello, sir, would you like cranberries in your coffee? And it's like, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't want it in everything. <laughs> so that's my problem. But you know, other than that, I like Bailey's. Is pretty much like what I think of when I think of Christmas. It's weird because I've never really. I mean, I I drink Bailey's every now and again, but I've never associated Bailey's to be like a festive drink. But maybe yeah, that's I, just me. I literally I don't buy it any time of year other than other than Christmas. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, um, it's probably a good thing. So I have it, <laughs> I have it in large glasses because <laughs> yeah. I, I imagine it's quite because uh, it's so creamy. I imagine there's quite a lot of calories in it. And yeah, stuff like that. it's not. Yeah. it's not the healthiest of drinks to just uh, chug. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure. I'm sure it's like sugary as well. Definitely taste it. Yeah. It tastes oh, yeah, yeah, for great. Sure. But you can like pop it. Um, you know, you can pop it in your coffee. You can have a hot chockey with it. That's just the. It's just the good shit, man. Just, just turn everything alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah, it's great, it's good, and that's man. what Christmas is all about. If you're if you're in the UK, Christmas is just about getting wasted. <laughs> oh <laughs> so, yeah, it really is. It's just it's just the year to just get off your face and no one judges you yeah exactly it's like drink at noon ah it's fine it's christmas it's christmas isn't it? yeah it's christmas yeah oh uh, but yeah God. no apart from that i'm pretty good man um you know pretty standard uh, i mean i've basically just been playing halo all week i'm gonna be honest <laughs> nothing nothing it's, much more exciting has happened to me um, it's been quite quite the um quite the journey hasn't it since monday <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've definitely clocked in well over a day game time on it already. Um, each, yeah, I think. I'm I'm over twenty four hours. I think I'm in like thirty hours like now. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm probably about that because I know you hop on in like intervals where I I don't. So we're probably about the same. I imagine we're both probably like thirty hours in. Yeah. Um, and oh mate, I've been loving it. I've been loving it so so much. It's um, it's just I mean, I, and I was saying I was going to bring it up. Uh, in the podcast, I was talking to you before as well. It's just, it's so fun. It's just so fucking fun. Like, I take it quite competitive in the sense that I do want to win my games and stuff, but like when I hop onto other shooters, um, like Apex and stuff like that, you know, the goal is to win, and there's not many opportunities for you to just fuck around, you know, outside yeah. of maybe some like Kraber no scopes or just messing around a little bit. Yeah. But in Halo, I feel like just. 
I, f- I just feel like no one really cares that much either. No one cares if you're bottom of the leaderboard. No one's called me out for that. And you yeah. just hop in vehicles. You just try some wacky shit. And you just have fun with it. Um, and uh, literally, oh, that was another. I just remembered that Go. was another clip that I I recorded, but it's just gone. It's it's in the ether somewhere. <laughs> yes, no. I did the coolest fucking thing. There was like a hornet floating just off the map. Not hornet. I always call it a hornet. A wasp. <laughs> yeah. A hornet's the bigger version. They do exist in the Halo universe. I think they. Do. I don't know like... what they look like, but I, th- I think you're right. I think they do exist. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure they do exist. But yeah, I keep calling it a hornet. But yeah, a wasp. And it was like floating off the map, and I literally sprinted, jumped off the map, and where he thought he was safe, but he wasn't. Fucking grapple jacked him, took his took his thing, but then someone else was shooting me, so the thing, you know, when they start glowing and overheating and it was blowing up while I was getting in it. So I was mm-hmm. like, fuck, I now need to bail. So I hopped out again, still off the map, fucking grapple hooked it as it was exploding to give myself momentum to get back onto the map. Oh and then grapple goodness. hooked again in <laughs> midair on a rock and flung myself all the way back in the map and I just survived. I literally nice. just spider man my way everywhere. I must yeah. have it was crazy, dude. Um, I love that. It's so, so and memorable. And I clipped it, and it's just gone. Because yeah, for some reason, my Xbox cool. won't let me keep clips yeah, yeah. anymore. It's just not happy. <laughs> yeah. So you're too good. You stop. Yeah. Well, that sounds awesome. Um, yeah, I love that. I love how... And, like... It's so good. It's nice. I think that that is, like, definitely one of the, um, like, real bits of magic that they've managed to do with this game, is that you have those moments, and you're like... I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> I'm gonna remember yeah. that because it's just like oh. that's gonna be like you know, it's like a, a intersection of like just the like the the rare situation you found yourself in, the equipment that you happen to have, and like your own creativity, right? You know, it's like mm. you can that couldn't have happened without those three things intersecting at just the right time, um, and that yeah. it just makes it so so magical when they do happen. Um, I totally know what that's you mean. Funny, um, right. So and I want to, and actually, Joe, you know because I, obviously, like, I, I, we're going to be having a big section. Though, so if you're not, if you're really not interested in listening to Halo multiplayer, you're probably worth just forward winding a little bit. I'll have the timestamps up for. We'll speak about campaign in a little bit, but we are going to be talking about Halo because we are shoot boys. So, um, but I wanted to just rewind a little bit just to the beginning of the week, and, I, and obviously, you know, as a bit of a retrospect on the the shadow drop and the anniversary you know like we, we did our reaction that like if you want to see the live reaction you, you can go and do so because we, we did a video for that um so i just kind of wanted to ask you how you felt like looking back on on the anniversary show and you know how did you how did you th- feel that that show was um and the whole drop like what, what did you think that was that's good or bad or uh yeah i mean as you said um we did we did record ourselves watching the whole thing so that'll be in the description below if, if anyone wants to check that out um, and our reactions to the whole shadow drop thing, um, but yeah, I thought the show was was pretty was pretty fantastic overall. I mean, it was kind of what we expected the whole way. Um, with, I mean, we kind of actually lost hope that, that that Halo shadow drop would happen, but yeah, um, the show as a whole was, you know, it was an anniversary event, right? It was looking back on how Xbox has done you know, since it, it launched its original Xbox, you know, and there was like the rock on stage, you know, just selling it yeah. back in back in the time. And it was actually quite cool that they got the rock back again to do like a promotion for the new Xbox. And yeah, he's yeah, also yeah. promoting his new movie, but we'll we'll, we'll ignore that. Um guy's so fucking yeah. beefy. He's so beefy. He's properly just like he's so he's so, he's so much more muscly now than he was back then. Like he's, he's crazy. He's, he's fucking so stacked, dude. um but yeah uh so that that was all pretty cool it was like a trip down memory lane you know um and they were just going through all that stuff so it was very gooey it was very nice um and then they also announced like was it like 70 new backwards compat titles that's Um, right yeah and i think half of them were getting frame boosts they were coming with like with like 60 frames and stuff like that um not 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 the whole catalog um i I do have a I do have a list of them on the notes here, um, like halfway down. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, we could, we, you know, we can maybe just chuck up on screen or chuck them in the description or something like that. The mm-hmm. a, 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 a link to all of them, um, which I actually heard was the last uh, backwards compat drop they were actually going to do. So that's there's no more backwards compat titles coming yeah. in the future. 
That'll, that'll be that. I don't know what yeah. number that brings it to total, but I think I think for most people they've done a good job of getting it's like a couple hundred, right? If oh, they've done seventy now. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely like a couple hundred plus. Yeah. Yeah, comfortably. Um, I think they've done a good job from from why. Like, cause I, I've only played a few games in Battle Compatible, but like, I'm glad that they were there. I, I played Red Dead, the first one, because I never played it back in the day, and I played Alan Wake back in the There's a remastered version now. This was a couple of years ago, um, which I'd never played. Um, and I was glad that I got to, you know? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, I think For that sure. is the last one. And I think that's that's probably that's probably okay you know um, yeah it's you know there has to be a time where eventually you need to just start dumping all of your resources into the future right um yeah. you, can, you can't you can't have um a team or a, a load of resource that could be used for you know improving your product now and in the future working on things in the past eventually you've got to leave things in the past in the past right right uh, I, th- I think that that team is moving over to the cloud team now as well so that's the thing you've got to remember yeah. they had a whole team dedicating to like getting this stuff to, to work so now they've got to move on to, to the new stuff but yeah yeah so that was cool um and yeah just the whole vibe of the show was just nice it was just like a nice warm um happy show uh you know just a nice little trip down memory lane as we were yep. saying um and then and then obviously right right towards the end they literally closed off the show with uh 343 um the multiplayer team uh on screen basically saying you know thanks for all your testing and the flighting and all that kind of stuff you know um they found themselves i guess ahead of schedule um for for the release that they were looking for mm-hmm. and uh you know they released it in beta you know they have to they have to throw the the, the beta term because it's not a full release and well, if you do experience yeah. technical difficulties <laughs> it's because it's not on the full release yet um but you know everything that they planned for the 8th of december is in there you know maps game modes uh battle pass all that kind of stuff um and yeah, we could just play it on that night, and that was fucking so cool. And I did not play me. it on that night. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, not you. You had a you had a badminton match for you. Did. Um, but yeah, I just whipped it on download. Um, went to dinner, and I was able to play it that night. So that was so cool. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that. It's um, I, and you know, it's because it's easy. To, it's easy to just take away from the show, like you said, like all oh, seventy backwards compatible games and the shadow drop at the end. And I just think it was so, it was so exciting. I, I know because obviously the, the rumors like of it dropping were there, and like nobody had ter- nobody had like um, shot it down. And you know, as it came to the last minutes, it was so exciting. And then you know, it went to the three four three team, and you just you couldn't help but as they were speaking about it, just feeling happy for them because. And we'll speak about this more as we go th- towards the um, campaign previews as well. But like you know, th- this team has clearly had a hard fucking time. Like we know, not in an official capacity, but like loads of sources have said that the team has had a really hard time getting used to remote work. And you know, obviously the game got delayed, and you know they're dealing with the Halo community. So that's already like you know you're already on suicide watch at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, so like all of this, you just can't feel happy for them. It's like that man, like they fucking did it. Like they they did it. They did it, and they get to like surprise everyone early. Like yes, there are nitpicks here and there which we'll speak about, but like you know, overall, like this is considered a huge success. Um, oh, and we'll and, and you know, you just can't feel you can't help but feel happy for them. And you know, with Joseph Staten, um, and what's his name, Tom French as well has been leaving the multiplayer. You know, they've um, they've really done just 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 such a fantastic job with the multiplayer. Um, but be beyond that, you know, the actual event itself, I, I found myself getting like a little bit emotional towards the end. Like you know, they were talking about. Um, you know, like social gaming and everything, and um, and I was like, man, like it, you know, it. I wouldn't be where I was today without it, sort of thing, and um, and then obviously, you know, it, it was just it was cool to have that kind of reflection on all of that. But I thought I just thought it was such a good event. You know, obviously it wasn't a news beat, and they managed the expectations around it really well. You know, they said, don't expect anything big here, and obviously there, there was, but you know, it's yeah. it's that sort of expectation management that I think really, really helps because i think if you if you were a rando right and you didn't reach really, and you just tuned into something like this halfway through you'd be like why is this guy playing the didgeridoo well, i don't give a shit and, you know they ended up announcing 70 back compact games like 30 frame rate boost games um a teaser and a date for the halo show which is pretty hype that's been in the, in the making for a while yeah I forgot about that yeah right and then the um and obviously the, the, the halo uh, beta shadow drop um, followed by what may, may i add like a fucking excellent like um trailer they've done some amazing trailers for, for the multiplayer um 
like at the end he like followed a rocket up the main can and grappled it out the sky and then like fired it at a banshee. It was just awesome. Yeah. yeah um cool. Yeah, so I mean big congrats to the team. I think it was it was a really it's like it was a really nice way to celebrate the anniversary, but also uh have a couple of, of announcements and it, it feels like a real like um sort of like crystallization of, of Phil's like sort of vision and like putting the flag in the sand and being like, we're like, we're still here. We're still going. And like, this is it. Like we're turning the chapter now. I like the next era sort of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we've just pumped out Psychonauts 2, you know, Age of Empires, um, Flight Sim, um, Forza. Forza, Halo, and that's on the horizon. And it's all glowing so far, you know? So that's why I think that's what it was. It really felt like it felt like sort of that, that next chapter is, is really sort of starting. And, and that was, I just thought they, they did that really, really well. So big props to the team. Awesome video. Loved it. I, I, I really, yeah. I really had a nice time just, just actually watching it beside anything else. For sure. Excellent. So if you're here to talk about Halo, this is where we start talking about Halo. Obviously we've dabbled in it a little bit so far. Um, we've got, a lot of things to say. I mean, I I don't know what you'd like to talk about first because if you scroll a bit further down in the notes, I have like a summary of the feedback of the things they changed since the last feedback, and this was this was maybe like two weeks ago now. Of so obviously before the rumor started of the shadow drop. Um, uh, so I don't know if you want to start with that or if you just want to sort of like sort of free flow into the conversation and then we could just maybe um, just keep that in the well, background and refer to it where where we want. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, those are sort of updates they've made since it actually <clears throat> did come out in beta, right? Like, they, they they weren't there on on the Monday or the Tuesday. So, I guess we could just talk about it in general and then just move into those changes. Because I know that yep. one, of the, one of the things listed here is the whole radar situation. Mm-hmm. So, so that, that's been up to from 18 to 22. Are you sure? Because we're playing last battle. night. It's, yeah, I was playing last night, Big Team Battle. It said 18 meters in the bottom left. Yeah, it does. I know I did notice that, but I maybe it's just... Um, maybe they haven't updated the text. It's, or quickly. Just a, it's just a UI bug, is it? Yeah, maybe UI isn't updated. But maybe... I mean, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure I would have put in the notes if they like hadn't changed it for launch. But assuming this is launch, having said that, that, that might yeah. be the case. It, that, that Actually, this hasn't kicked in yet. Um, yeah, potentially. Um, I'm just control but yeah, I mean... Yeah. Uh but I mean just uh yeah, I mean just just overall the um obviously we're having so much fun with, with the multiplayer, it's it's absolutely fantastic. Um so I mean right right off the bat for anyone that doesn't know, obviously it launched it's launched with um BCB and Quick Play as their game modes. Uh Quick Play consists of like your classic Slayer, uh Oddball, uh CTF and um control points or something basically like domination you know three Stronghold. flags you hold them stronghold yeah uh, and then you got btb um with again capture the flag um uh total control and slayer and slayer yeah and then you've got seven maps oh no the throwy one for... power oh, yeah, and the, yeah the power cell one i forgot what that's called um yeah, i can't remember what that's called either oh no i totally have it <laughs> it's called <Well>. lemmings <laughs> called lemmings yeah we call it lemmings um and then obviously quick play has seven maps on launch and btp has three maps um i definitely have noticed i i I think i could could do with a few more btp maps Mm. um three does seem quite quite little um and i think it would be i think it would feel less like small if if the two out of three maps didn't have like exactly the same like scenery, color palette, and everything about them, um, it, it, I, I think it would seem bigger and a little bit more um, have a bit more variety if there was just like uh, you know a forest map with trees, a desert map, and then that really cool map, um, the 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 banished the, the, the banished one, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're just very similar in terms of aesthetic. Don't get me wrong, the maps play very, very different. But I, just I was going to say, they do play quite different, don't they? they? Yeah, they do. But I just feel like they just, they in my in my mind, I can't help but kind of just blend them together. They, you know, because they're just so similar in, in the way they look. 
Yeah, I, I think that's uh, I think that's that's fair. I, like, because I was thinking about this as well, like the amount of maps in the game. Like, I, I would say it's serviceable. Like, I think there's a good yeah. like a, a good amount of arena maps. Um, I think there's like seven. I think there's ten total in the game. I think there's seven. Life fire overcharge, the Giant streets. Out. That one. Yeah. Um. And what was the other one in the a bazaar? Um. Launch site. That weird indoor one with the shiny. It's all shiny and there's like yeah, plants yeah, yeah. growing on the ceiling. Okay. Oh, and Behemoth, the bigger one, the one that's bigger on, on the on the Halo ring. Um. Yeah. Like Sandy. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. Seven. And I, so I think seven is actually pretty like nice for launch with the arena. Seven. Seven for quick play is good. I don't, I don't have a problem with that yeah. at all. And again, they're all. I actually, I think all the maps are pretty great. I think there's one mode on one map which is a little bit pants, um, which yeah. is the one flag on on launch site. Which um, yeah, might need a bit of adjusting. If you if you're listening, uh, kind of to... impossible to attack <laughs> on that map. Yeah, kind of impossible. Yeah. It basically just ends up being a a two two tie every yeah. single time. And I said, I said to you before, it's a shame because I actually really like that map. I think it plays really like in a really cool way. Um, but it's a very um, cool map. It's like it's like a um, horseshoe, isn't it? And you can like jet over from one yeah. side to the other. But other than that, yeah, uh, it's just it's just it's cool. But that yeah, that game mode on that is <laughs> it's, it's the only it's literally the only time with any of the game modes on any of the maps where I'm like, this is not balanced well. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you flip, but it just, I know you flip because you attack and then you defend, but it just it doesn't feel good to for, for the def- uh, attacking team to fail six times and for it to be a tie. Like, so. And I, I, I don't think it's so much like it's just impossible. Don't get me wrong. It's very hard to get the flag and bring it back. That It's it's a hard map to get on. Yeah. But the main issue I have is is the time limit. You have like you have like three yeah. minutes, three minutes to do that. It's, yeah. it's it's so little. Yeah. Like you have time for I've one like, push, I, and that's it. Yeah, I've like picked up like a couple weapons from like a gun rack, and I'm like, cool. I've got a BR, and I've got a shock rifle, and it's just like, oh, well, more than one third of the match is gone already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we have one push in this. Like, just I I think a simple quick fix is just make it five six minutes, if not longer, eight minutes, something yeah. like that. Um. But yeah, that, that 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 is a bit like that. Yeah. But I mean, and, as as far as like just gameplay is concerned, and and how we've been receiving the multiplayer, um, it's honestly almost flawless. In my it's opinion. immaculate. Um, no, it's yeah. absolutely immaculate. I've I've experienced little to no technical difficulties. I think maybe right? like one. Um, yeah, but can you One, like, like it hung for like five seconds? And yeah, chilled, like it was a bit weird, but then it just put me straight back in. I think one of our mates had a crash, but overall, ninety nine percent, it's been like fucking immaculate. And yeah. when I I've, I've played a little bit of the trial of Battlefield twenty forty two, and it literally took me an hour to find a fucking game that wasn't oh, buggy no. or glitchy or just just didn't work. You know, so many times we just got into a lobby. Um, in in 2042 and it just didn't load and then you know you got like the text of people typing in the top corner and they were like another bug lobby everyone you have to leave you know it's not it's not working this is yeah, infinite yeah, yeah. loading and that's just a, that's just a common thing um and it's just uh, i don't know yeah it, it, comparing it to those you know this is this is released three weeks early in beta and it's just kind of flawless over yeah. something that's out i i it's such it's like round of applause like like when's the last time you had a a game this big launched to like no issues no server issues everyone and it was with a shadow drop like hello <laughs> like, yeah. like you it's know free like, to, it's free to play halo like the servers were probably getting absolutely rammed let's be honest yeah, yeah i yeah. don't know what the player counts were but they must have been fucking insane and there were no technical difficulties that's that's fucking ridiculous like that's it, crazy it, it broke records for um an xbox game studio game on steam um haven't heard about numbers anywhere else but that's all i thought i think it's because it's publicly available on steam that information isn't it um yeah but i mean just for comparison's sake forza horizon 5 hit 81k concurrent players and halo mcc at its peak hit 161k um so Halo Infinite went past, I think it went up to like 200k, maybe a bit more, which is a lot for concurrent players because obviously mm. people sleep. Um, but yeah, um, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's su- such a big pat on the back that we were just able to 
play. I mean, I, I came on the next day and I was like, I was like kind of expecting there to be some server issues and everything. And there was just none. Like it all just worked. Like I think we had like a little bit of some issues here and there with um, like quick resume not working properly. But it's kind of, yeah. it's, it's unfortunate, but it was to be expected because it like it doesn't, it doesn't kind of gel like that well with um, games that require um, online connectivity like it. But I've I've had some success with it as well. So it's just inconsistent. I think sometimes I boot it back up and it connects me and I'm like fine, ready to go. But other times it will just the game just like infinitely loads, <laughs> like all the stuff on the screen and it won't let me um queue. Um, yeah, but that's not the game's fault. Like I said, it's um yeah, just like amazing. And I guess that's all all of those tests, flightings, like put to good use, right? You know, they really scaled those servers up and got the numbers right. Um, yeah, which they had to. Like man, they had to. And we've spoken about this in previous shows that everything. 343 does is under the world's biggest magnifying glass they're operating on such a thin hairline like with no room for error um mm-hmm. i can't believe they pulled off um the launch like this let alone a shadow drop but so i think yeah like you were saying in terms in terms of the gameplay um there was there's this one thing that was going through my head before we started the podcast that i just wanted i wanted to make sure i said because i think it's a really good way to describe why i like why I'm having a good time. And I think Halo has a really good one more game factor. Like you finish the game, like whether you've done good or bad and you're like, just like want to play another one. Or like before you log off, you're like, oh, maybe I can get one more. And just because it's like, you know, you lo- load into every game. It's like a, a fresh um, template. You know, it's even start. So you're never like, you're never going to be slapped in the first few seconds. Um, mm-hmm. And it's just always exciting. It's just always exciting. It's always fun um yeah what what have, what's been like the standout moments for you really like since it's launched um i mean literally for me probably the equipment right mm. i mean it's just i just love getting my hands on equipment um i enjoy the grapple hook so much um it's it's insane like i've made some ridiculous plays with the grapple hook um and uh, as much as I do think a few of them could use some tweaks, maybe some buffs here and there, um, I think Drop Shield could do with a little bit of love in terms of maybe maybe the squares, the little holographic squares taking a, a f- couple more bullets, maybe. Um, you know, they're useful in terms of blocking explosives, but that's about it. Um, they don't really do anything in terms of changing a gunfight 1v1. Um but yeah, and then obviously Repulse is so sick. Um, I've done some crazy stuff with the Repulsor. It's just like you said, it's just not, it's the, it's the not knowing what you're going to do with these things. You pick it up and just you just don't know what 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 shit's about to come. Like you might yeah. just do something so awesome or so yeah. hilariously stupid or just I don't know. Like it's just it it genuinely just feels so fun. Um, the game just lets you do it as well. Yeah, it just lets you do and, it. There's not one time that I've been like, "Oh, what? I can't do that." No, I can do it. <laughs> yeah. It it just does let you do it. Um, it, there's there's little and there's just like intricacies everywhere with all these equipments. I remember when we were playing that power cell game mode the other day, and um, they all spawn in like a big cluster, like all these power cells, and everyone fights for them to bring them back. Um, and I got over there by the spawn, and I had a repulsor. And I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to see what happens, right? I just got behind it and just repulsed and just knocked like all 15 power cells just like miles towards Into our, our half, and I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was just like, well, that's fucking cool. And I was yeah. just like juggling them with the repulsor, just like yeah, fucking yeah. knocking them everywhere. And it's just so many like intricacies with just just how how everything like interacts i've i've repulsed someone who was literally like energy sword lunging towards me and i was like fuck off (laughs) yeah (laughs) and i just like gunned him down yeah um just so cool man like that 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 for me is is what i'm having the most fun with um and then you know like see a few standout guns but yeah it's the it's the equipment that that stood out for me and those just crazily hilariously awesome funny moments so definitely yeah. definitely yeah i like it's um it's the same as we said in the flighting really i think the grapple hook and the, and the repulsor are, remain the standout ones but i do it does seem like the active camo has gotten a buff um and i've been enjoying using that a lot more like it's it's not fun to die against but it's I, like it's, yeah. it's, it's it's a lot more powerful now and there's like you actually care about getting it because you're like actually i can get free kills i can like it can turn like a game in your favor an active camo mm-hmm. now 
which is probably for the best. And this this is making this has been making me think as well. Um, I think active camo in all sorts. It's like holograms and stuff like that. Um, it's one of those things that doesn't tend to age well in a game's life because players get good at seeing it. Um, so I'm happy that there's this thing. I think things like threat centers, for example, are a good counter to it. Like if you know someone has it, you just pop it on your feet, pop it on a wall where you think they might be, and that will reveal them. So, um, you know, I, th- there are like um, interactions there that that sort of um, balance that out a little bit. But yeah, I'm totally with you. Um, all of the equipment things there are just so mental. I um, man, I just I've just and let's not forget fusion coils. <laughs> oh, all yeah. hail the fusion coil! <laughs> hey, I'm a fusion coil main. Like, Best I, edition. I love I love that. I, I'm pretty sure I have most cog medals of any Halo player. I I think you must do. I've seen you, I, I I've have, seen you kill so many men. I've had so many. Like it'd be interesting to know just how many. Like I'm definitely sort of like. Easily fifty plus, if not more. Yeah, it's mental. Uh, they just I, feel so good to throw as well. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I love just smashing someone with one. It's like the nicest feeling. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fusion core man. So. <laughs> like their entire, I, I've got this wicked clip. I've just, been, I've been stashing clips on my phone because, it, and if you want to see them, you can go to our Twitter quick resume pod because you know I'm uploading them like fairly frequently at the moment, and there's some pretty dank clips. Um, and this is one I've got on my phone at the moment where I just like at the very beginning of launch site, I sprint towards like act where active camo spawns, you know, or, or overshield, whichever one it is <clears throat> like down on the left. Um, and there's always a barrel there, a uh, fusion core, sorry. And I picked it up and this mong, uh, warthog just drove past me and I saw it late. So I like quickly ran around the corner and I just like tossed it well in advance. It was like an American football throw. I was like, Ugh! and it just like hit the back of the turret as though it like got to the flag and I got a double kill for it. And I was like, oh, fuck, it, fuck that's dude. so cool. Um, yeah. yeah. And like, even, even beyond just like getting kills, like you said there, you know, there's that creativity element where you can use it in objectives and it's, and it extends beyond, the equipment as well, because there, are, I think there are times where we were playing that power cell mode and we were like, just frag them, just frag them so they get knocked closer to us, you know, like mm-hmm. we could use stickies or whatever. And that, that worked well. Um, mm-hmm. And I've got this clip of me like on Behemoth, the sand circle map of, oh, it's happened last night. Like our mates were just driving around in circles, like trying to gun people down. And I was getting chased. They like, like spawned fairly close. And I was like, I need to get out of here. And I just ran over and went, yeah, and like grappled on. And I just got flung like all the way around and like just jumped straight in. And they were like, oh, hi, Dick. What did you get here? I was like, I don't know, I'm safe now though. It's just like, it, I went so far and so fast. And it's just like, I can't believe the game lets me do that. It's just awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, it's it's so cool. There's 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 a lot of um, there's a lot of outplay potential. I think mainly in like in BTB. I don't feel there's much in arena. I feel like the maps definitely, the majority of maps, not all of them, do feel very one one kill one death sort of thing. It's very hard to actually it's to sort of turn it around and do something more um, because your shields take so long to come back up sometimes. Um, but mm. yeah, I mean that that's only a handful of maps I felt that way. Um to to be fair. Um so but yeah I no, Yeah, I yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think you can I think Arena is less forgiving in that way, but I think it, I, it's because it's so much more focused on power weapons, you know, like if you have power weapons or equipment, like that's your time to like take on the two V one or, or things like that. Um yeah. and, and may I say as well, I think I, I think I might have said this in the podcast before, like I've always been useless at understanding when to use Halo grenades. I think I'm getting it, man. I think I'm getting there. And do you want to hear about it? Yeah, man. Let's hear your <laughs> grenade story, your rags to riches grenades. Yeah, man. Well, so I, like, you know, I one once upon a time I was a lowly marine and I thought I see Spartan, I kill Spartan with grenade, I throw grenade at Spartan. A- as it turns out, what you do is you you shred Spartan in front of you, and then you know, you know, in Halo when your shield's down and you're like running and you're like, someone's gonna come through that fucking doorway and they're gonna shoot me. I know it, I know, it. and then they do it and you die. You just throw it there just in case. They're just in case grenades. That's what they are, and that's what, yeah. that's what I figured out. And then because if you if you get that hit, their shields are down. You know they're there because you get the hit markers. 
while you wait a couple of seconds for your shield to come back up, then you just push on them. Their shield's already down. Bang. That's 2v1. Done. Then you do the same again. Pick up their grenades. Where are they going to fucking come from? There. <laughs> you just yeah. you, you pre-throw. And that's like what I've been learning. Like, Because before I was, I've been like using them as part of the of like the 1v1, like the dance, the fight, which you can do. But I think yeah. it's more like you try and win with your guns and you use the grenades to uh, like almost area denial, right? Yeah. To stop that you, you... person coming in to finish you off. Yeah, grenades. Grenades are used to. They're either used preemptively or they're used to stop an a, a, an escape of like a weak enemy that you've you got you got the advantage of in a gunfight, right? Um, but yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, it's it's it, their main use is just like preemptive, right? And I mean, you find them everywhere. Um, you yeah, know, you 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 pick them up off corpses that died. 30 seconds ago with your teammate and stuff like that so you, you've always kind of got a couple so you, you never feel like it's a waste to just toss one in a doorway and it's be like oh no one was there whatever right no that's why it doesn't really matter yeah exactly yeah. you're just gonna pick up more in a second or two yeah. um so uh so yeah but i mean and and the grenade spam as annoying as it is because it, it can be quite annoying in halo sometimes mm-hmm. sometimes i just feel like like I'm just being like stealth bombered, like sitting on like, yeah. a flag. It's ridiculous. All you hear are grenades just everywhere. Um, and you it's, sometimes all you can do is just put down your controller and just be like, "Let's hope. Let's yeah. just fucking hope that these five grenades won't kill me." Right? Um, you know, it. I do think it's less. It's less than it was in other Halos. I feel like mm. previous Halos, Halo Three. Uh, I can't remember Reach. I think Reach as well were just kind of insane. Mental. The, the grenade damage was insane. Like, it was kind of nuts. Where this one, you have to have them relatively accurate for them to be effective in in any way. It's not often where it just fucking nukes you and just sends you to the moon, right? Yeah. Um, so, but, yeah, and I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I've got there. I've got to say as well, like, there's definitely... I like I, I get the sense when I'm playing those maps, especially when I like playing objective... I'm holding oddball, I'm holding flag, whatever. <coughs> that there is, um, there's like learning there in terms of like the, the map geometry and like where to stack or like moving so that, you uh-huh. know, you're anticipating grenades to come that way. So I'm just going to move to the grenade. You know, I take very little damage and then move back. Things like that, you know, I think, yeah, uh-huh. I, I'm with you. I think it's not, it, they don't feel busted. There are times where a million grenades can actually fall down your mouth and you're like, well, I was never going to survive. Just but, you know, sense, there, yeah. yeah, there are also times where I walk out in the open and there happen to be three people staring at me. You know, it's just, that's just shooter yeah. things. But like, it's yeah, just I, shooter things, yeah. Right. I, yeah, I don't think it's something which is unbalanced, which I have definitely felt in other Halo games. So I'm definitely with you. Actually, how do we how do we feel about grenades in general? Like, because um, we're only talking about frags, obviously. What, what do we think about the rest of them? Um... I think they're pretty good. I think plasma nades feel good. Um, I've had a few sticks. I don't feel like they're too magnetized. You know, mm-hmm. they're not bullshit. Uh, Halo 3, I remember sometimes it was just like you threw it like here and you just saw it go <laughs> like stick onto yeah. someone. You're like, well, that was just unfair, right? Yeah, it made that noise um, as well. So you do have to be quite accurate you know, with, with your plasma nades, but, you know, not like it's not like a throwing knife, you know. So they feel pretty good. Uh, and they're quite powerful, even if you don't stick. You could just throw it for like area denial. They still do a lot of damage. Whereas mm-hmm. in previous Halos, I felt like if you didn't stick someone, it was like it was like a potato. It was like yeah. you threw a fucking pebble at a, start, at a spot. And they just didn't do anything. Um, so that's good. Spike nades, I feel like I feel like they could use a bit of love. They're they're oh, okay. Really? They're okay. Um, but I do feel like they could use a little bit of love. And I know they're supposed to be used in like small rooms to be more effective than any other nade, but I have still found that I'm launching them on walls, you know, sort of similar to like a Titan grenade in like Destiny, you know, like the lightning nade. Like mm. I know someone's around that corner, so I stick it to the wall to their side so it blows up like towards them that way. And I still feel like it just doesn't do much damage. It just rattles around in a small room and it's still kind of RNG whether or not those needles are actually going to hit them. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think they do launch in a particular direction. I just I just think they ping off in, in all around the place. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just a bit too RNG for me. Uh, I haven't had too much success with them, uh, even using them in scenarios where I feel like they're designed for. Mm. Um, so I feel like maybe they could use a little bit of love. Um, and then Tesla nades, fucking nerf them. Nerf <laughs> them. They're stupid. They're fucking stupid. I think either give one, don't don't let don't have two on pickup. Only give the player one, 
or just reduce the distance. It's just ridiculous. You could just toss it into a room. It's just no skill. It just fucking just latches onto everybody within like a fucking like 15 foot radius or something stupid like that. It's, they're a little bit too aggressive, in my opinion. Um, yeah, they are I think very those, powerful. Those need a nerf. Um, great grenades. I love them by design, and I think they should be in the game. I just think they're a little bit too aggressive right now. Um, mm. They're useful in any scenario. Like I feel so confident knowing in my bottom right that I have two Tesla nades, and I'm like, I could run into this room, toss one, and I could probably get a triple kill. Like yeah. it's it, just by hit, just shooting them with an AR, knowing that my grenade has shredded all three of their shields. Like, yeah, it's 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 a little bit too good. Um, yeah. yeah, you can do you can do a lot with them, can't you? You can like pop them in a doorway to like block it, or you can like toss yeah. it into an area, and yeah, and it's just um, they and the are radius is cr- crazy. The amount of times I've literally just like tossed it up to a hornet, uh, a wasp, or a banshee, and it's just like it's not even that close, but it it still is just shut down their their vehicle. It's just. It's just too good for too many scenarios. Mm. Um, I I do kind of feel like, I yeah. I, there's a part of me which feels like they are good by design in that the set like because you don't they're not that common. If you know what are. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's I well I for one have memorized pretty much all of the spawns for Tesla nades on like every map. Mm. I know where to go to get them, and I always get I cheese them. I cheese them pretty hard. I don't know. I, just, I don't feel like I find them as often as I mean. Well, obviously, like frags, but but all like as stickies and um, spikes. I, I don't feel like I find them as often. Maybe, maybe more not contested. quite as maybe not quite as often, but they are they're very accessible. Um, I think at least. Um, but that, that that's my only gripe with the whole grenade um, ecosystem is just yeah maybe maybe nerf Tesla nades a little bit. Yeah, that's um, fair. That's fair. I just, I just think there, are, and there's so much anti-vehicle in this game already um, that it's just, yeah. Mm. But overall, I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty well balanced in terms of grenades. Um, and I guess you know, while we're talking about grenade ecosystem, what about the weapon ecosystem? How do you feel about weapons, sort of spawned weapons, and sort of like off the rack ones? How do, how, yeah. how do you feel generally? Uh, generally, I feel pretty good. Um, I I feel like with any of these sorts of games, balance is something that you constantly chase and never really hit. It's kind it's of tough. it's impossible, right? Because it is subjective to a degree as well. Um, mm-hmm. But I will say generally, like, really good. Uh, I think there are some things here and there which could use a bit of love. There are some things that I'm, like, only now starting to learn how to use properly. Like, for example, I've been popping off with a heat wave recently. Um, I know what and, you mean. Me too. Actually, me too. Like, I've, I've, I've kind of gotten to grips with it. What I found I was doing before is I was pressuring myself too much to use the vertical shots. Um, oh, when I actually, I, I use it. So I use it if I need like just a little bit more range. But I find myself using horizontal more and just like playing for um, like distance more because like you can you can three shot, which is the same as the bulldog. Um, mm-hmm. But. I think if you if you and if you if you're lucky and you get like two good verticals, if you hit all shots, all six uh, pellets, you can two shot as well. Um, and obviously, like you have that, you can bank and you can do other stuff with it as well, which makes. And there are times where I've like pinged it around a corner and got pre shots off, which like helps me win the fight. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that's really cool. So yeah, so there are the things there are things like that, and I think what I'm learning is that all of the things in the bo- in the sandbox are really distinct from each other, and I actually think that's in that sense it's really well done. Everything has its own space and feels unique and there's no overlap at all they all play they all play very different and it's just it's just a question of getting enough hands on time isn't it right um right. i do definitely feel the same way about the heat wave um just going back to that like i also feel like the heat wave it's just a case of learning how the pellets work and you need to lead your shots a little bit as well because it's not hit scan um yep. So once you're like, okay, so I'll just fire a little bit in advance to where this guy's going to be, and I just shred him, right? Or I just barrel stuff them in melee. You know, yeah. the old shotgun yeah. melee. Done, and that still works you know? as well, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do I do think it's a case of just getting enough hands on time, um, and that will just come with experience. Mm-hmm. I do just, I do think some stuff needs some, some love. I think yeah. the needler needs some love. I think... Even if you use it in its ideal scenario, it's still pretty. It's still pretty bad. Yeah. Um, 
and there was something else as well. I think Commando's kind of fine as it is. Again, you just need to get used to the recall pattern. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I wouldn't say no to a bit of a tweak, a positive tweak maybe. on the Commando. But then it was, you know, they only gave it a slight nerf to where it was, it was one bullet in the, yeah. in the in the flighting, and now it's like kind of on the bad side. So it's so hard to balance these things, as you said at, at the beginning of this. Um, just the smallest tweak. It can take a gun from feeling a little bit too good to feeling actually kind of not great anymore. I think, um, yeah, because it was, it's like it was like we were saying the other day. Like the commando still works really good at like long range. Like it works really nicely at long range. Um, but like yeah. mid range, it starts to not feel good, and you'll just get you'll get AR'd quicker unless you like if you miss a bullet, which you will because the reticle is tiny. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so um, and I and that is part of the thing as well like because the ar your starting loadout is quite powerful but like, the ar is quite good and the pistol is quite good is, um yeah. and so this was very good so i'm okay with and if the br is going to remain as i mean br feels good it won't win you it like you won't win up close against an ar which is like fine i think I, unless you like mm-hmm. hit every single shot um that's why like i would rather have the commando feel a bit more powerful so that i i pull it off the rail and i'm like i feel like i can do more with this off the um but rather than my AR. Of course, unless it's like close range or, you know, like whatever the optimal distance is for the AR. Like I, I feel like it should be better in um, the like mid range, but yeah. But it, it's, it's so, again, it's tough. Just you got, you got to balance things based on platform as well. Cause I know for a fact that PC players shred with the commando because yeah, they can control the recoil <clears throat> so much better than, than, than someone on console. It's insane. I've seen some people play on PC and their commando just doesn't move, and they're firing it as fast as humanly possible, and they're just lasering people. So you can't really do that on console. It's 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 a lot tougher. Yeah. Um, so it's it's very hard to balance these things, which is why I think they actually might leave the commando as is because it, it feels okay on console, and I think it's actually considered pretty pretty damn good on PC. So if, if you buff it, then it's just going to be insane on PC and then very good on console, right? So it's 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 tough. Um, it's it's such a hard job to balance these things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, there's. Um, I think apart from that, though, I think maybe the um, what's that grenade launcher one? Cinder shot. Cinder shot. I think maybe that could use a little bit of love again i think that might be better on pc where you can control it a bit better with the mouse the whole like um yeah the whole controlling the actual grenade in the air i think mm-hmm. that's a bit wonky on controller um and i find it quite hard to judge depth perception wise uh i don't know i don't know if, uh, uh, about you but i fire it like down and i'm like do i slam it down now do i curve it now like i can't tell the depth perceptions a bit yeah. off for me yeah that um, that is just learning though learning the weapon a bit um but yeah. i'm my, my problem with the cinder shot is that i don't feel like it's very clear when the when it's going to explode like it explodes after an amount of time but it seems to explode if you direct hit someone it'll explode but also if you get it close enough but don't necessarily hit them it seems to explode as well um yeah. and i feel like that can be a bit stingy sometimes like sometimes you'll put it between someone's legs and it will just be like like web up and i'm like well yeah, it okay. just like bounces off behind them and you're like well and now he's just shredded me yeah. with an ar yeah. and, I, and i guess I, I get that that's kind of you know it, like it's a grenade launcher like i get that um it doesn't yeah like you said it, it doesn't feel bad it definitely has a space but you know maybe a little tweak and that, that is the thing for most of the guns here i think a little tweak here and there would would be good um but with yeah. given how responsive they've been with all of this feedback so far, like I have zero doubts that this stuff is already isn't already being looked at. Um, mm-hmm. Plasma carbine needs a bit of love. Um, it has a space again. It has a space. It can be useful. Um, we've spoken about this. Like y- one good burst on someone will strip shield, and that's mm-hmm. problem is when you have a challenge that says get kills with the plasma carbine, oh, makes you want to pull God. your fingers off. Um, yeah, there should it's just, just be like. Possible. It's impossible. For, for, for some weapons, I feel like a good way to do it, instead of saying get kills, it should just be like get a thousand, not a thousand. Even no, damage. A thousand. Like just damage. Get, yeah. or, or just get a thousand score with it, right? Get a thousand score with the carbine. So it's just like assist. an, assist, an assist is 50. And, you know, two assists is 100. You're one tenth the way towards completing that challenge. You know, just, just generate the score you get f- using that gun in your hands and say... You know, get a thousand score with it because yeah. yeah i got the 10 kills with the pulse carbine i tried it for like two games i wanted to pull my fucking 
I, I wanted to pull Mikoch off. Like, I, hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to it's re-roll horrible. the challenge. I've been, I've been, re-roll it. I've been on one out of three for, and uh, like for days, and like I there's been ten. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry. I, I, I had it pre, pre before they made challenges easier. I had ten. Ten kills to the false carbine. I don't know if that's gone, man. Yeah, like um, that. Nice. Yeah, and that's the thing because when I use it, like trying to use it properly, like sometimes I can make it work. Like, and I definitely still feel it. It feels a little bit undertuned, but like there are times where I've made it. I, I've had a good fight. I've like led my shots. Stop relying on the tracking, by the way. Just lead your shots. Learn to lead them. Get in the academy or whatever. Yeah. And you'll find yourself stripping people very, very quickly for like an easy, uh, easy sort of uh, hot swap. Some but sidekick swap. Yeah, so I, I feel like that maybe needs a bit of love. Um, I guess uh, well, so Ravager. Needs a bit oh, of love, fucking ravage. But again, love. but right Crap. now, again, like I've I've just started using it like the mangler, and I've started I've had I've started to have a little bit of, of of success with it. So like literally, I just like burst people. If you get three hits, stab them, they die because it has increased melee damage because it's got a blade on the end. Um, yeah, yeah. And I uh, and like there are some game modes where I find the the um, charge fire really useful. Does it like bang you out kills? No, but it denies areas and like you keep, it, yeah. if people are walking through them, it does it stops them healing. You know, it's so, not bad for like total control. You know, just dump it on a flag, just don't like, blow your load on a flag, and you know, it kind of stops them dipping their toes in, or you know, they've taken a little bit of DOT because they're standing in it, so you're more likely to win the AR gunfight, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, uh, that's the thing. Everything has its uses, regardless of us saying it's it's quite bad or it needs a little bit of love. It still does have its uses. Like no gun feels trash in this game, um, in my opinion. Um, so I think they've done a pretty good job overall. And I think I'm just being a little bit nitpicky, maybe a little bit salty sometimes. Um, I think if I had to pick one gun from the sandbox, um, like just pick one gun that the devs should prioritize and maybe tweak a bit, it probably would be the Needler. I think everything else feels pretty okay in, in, in its own space. I just, feel, I, I just feel like I never win ever with the Needler, ever. I sometimes get kills, but I know what you mean. There are times where like, we start shooting at exactly the same time and I'll win by like a hair, like an absolute hair. Yeah. And it's like, I don't feel like I should have. Like, the, surely Needler's meant to yeah. excel like at this. Yeah. So a Needler should beat like an AR if you're staring each other down a hallway. Yeah. And you're, and you just, you just unload a clip into them. It yeah. should win like yeah. oh, every time, right? Otherwise, what's he doing in the game? Yeah. <laughs> Why is it there? And you're always going to wear a lot of shots because that's the thing about the needle. Like you don't actually do that much damage. They just explode. That's what makes it an interesting gun. Like you don't like if you're trying to finish someone off with the needler. Good fucking luck. Like and you only have time. Like you yeah. won't. You need to get the full like su- uh What's it called? Super combine or whatever it is. You know. Um, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it does next to nothing, and that's what makes it an interesting gun. But um, yeah, no, I'm with you there. Needler, I do think it needs a bit of love. Um, plasma pistol is another thing that comes to mind. Um, I think actually, I like to be it. honest, yeah, as as I've gone through the game, like I, again, it doesn't disrupt vehicles okay. anymore. But they did buff it actually. I think since the um, since the flighting and it strips shields. Very, the projectile moves fast. It doesn't track that well, but it's no, powerful. Yeah, the tracking sh- kind of shocking. From the- but yeah, I've I've kind of popped off on it. Uh, I think it definitely works better in arena where the maps are smaller and you you know you will you don't need to lead your shot or rely on that tracking it's just like it's at that medium range where the projectile's fast enough that you will just hit them right if you pre-charge it around a corner or something Mm -hmm. um good luck hitting anyone in btv with it like like that's probably not gonna happen much but i think overall it's pretty good i've done some some pretty hot plays full charge hot swap done i've actually gone on like a few killing sprees with it quite like it do you do you ever single fire it no no, okay. Never. I need to. I need to have a go with it in the academy and just like see how it kind of works. I mean, obviously it will strip shields, but like I would. I want to know if it's like useful to do that because I think part of what makes part of what makes the plasma pistol good compared to maybe how we felt about it in um, the flighting, barring any changes, because I actually can't remember and I'm trying to find if there is any changes, but they, they do acknowledge it, but I can't actually see anything about it being changed. Uh, is how good the psychic is. The psychic being good makes the plasma pistol good. You can strip yeah. shields at mid range and still pop someone's head off. You know, um, you can yeah. hit them with a. You know, you. you it's. Uh, yeah, you, you get my point. It's just that that's yeah. what makes it good. So yeah, the psychic is 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 very good. Um, anyone who thinks psychic needs a buff, in <laughs> any way, 
needs 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 your be, needs your brain restrung. Needs, yeah, needs to be thrown up a cliff. Like <laughs> it's so good. It's it's yeah. it's insane. No, I think I actually think this psychic is is near perfectly designed. Um, it's like you can one clip someone if you hit someone perfectly. Don't miss a bullet. But if you miss a bullet, that's going to slow you down because then you're you're either having to reload or you need to swap to your AR and then you can't get a headshot. Like because yeah. if someone if someone if if you go from sidekick to AR and you don't pull it off perfectly, someone who's gone AR to sidekick is going to kill you. Like I just think that's that's like perfect. Like that, that's so good. It's like that risk reward kind of thing. Like if you want to go around with just pistol, feel free. But you better fucking hit every shot. Yeah, 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 for sure. I uh, I agree. I think the sidekick's very well designed. Um, doesn't need any buffs or nerfs in my opinion. It's good. Fabulous. Something that needs changing. Uh, uh, something else that needs tweaking, I think, is our uh, vehicles. I think some vehicles need tweaking. They've acknowledged the this already. Shit. <laughs> the, cho- the chopper is shit. Um, the chopper is the worst thing I think I've driven in any video game period. Outside of Halo, inside of Halo, it's so bad. I've gotten some. I've done some work with it before, but it just dies too fast. Like, or I get shot out of it too fast, and it's hard to aim. Yeah. Like, for how hard it is to use, it doesn't. It's so clunky. It's so weird. I, I, I just, oh god. It, it, if you, I get in one and I just get angry. I like start sweating and I just get angry. I just don't like it. Yeah, I feel, I feel like I'm I'm having to work. Oh god, I just don't like it. Um, <laughs> and then and then obviously the ghost, a little bit too good. Um, maybe well, maybe maybe tweak the damage a little bit, a uh, little bit lower on the whole blast, and then maybe make the person inside it a little bit more exposed. Um, yeah, and then I'd be happy. Um, I don't I don't think it's insane, um, but I, I I do think it's. It's pretty, it's pretty oppressive at the moment, um, and I'm sure you you would agree with me. Yeah, um, definitely on the ghost front. Definitely. And I mean, we, that's... I don't know if you, I don't know if you agree with me on this one. Kind of think the banshee's kind of shit. Well, as of, that's what I was going to say. I'm looking at the vehicle feedback right now from the flight thing, and they and they've got ghost felt too strong in terms of damage output and in vehicle health, and also banshee did not feel effective enough with concerns around Ban- banshee's bomb damage output and ineffectiveness yes. of aerial maneuvers and vehicle health. So exactly. they're, all, they're exactly, already Yeah, I would. That's exactly how I describe it. There are a few times I've gotten inside the wasp, and I, I'm I'm like, this is great. I'm bombing people. I feel like an AT one thirty. You know, like I actually I actually put the bomb on like a flag, and I get like a double kill. Whereas like a banshee, I swear to God, I direct hit someone with the bomb, the the alternate fire, and it has it doesn't kill them. Yeah. It just doesn't. And I'm like, well, what's happening now? And I'm like driving into the floor at that point, and then someone hijacks <laughs> yeah, me, and I'm like, and I'm like, what is this fucking vehicle? It's so bad. Um, yeah, it's, it's especially when the the wasp actually feels pretty good. Um, I feel like, I mean, they're, they're counterparts, right? The banshee is just like the covenant's wasp, so the covenant's version of the wasp. They should feel quite equal in terms of aerial power. Um, but oh God, I think if I any- don't want to get in banshees, if if anything, banshee should have more damage because you have the disadvantage of you can't hover. If you pull back on the yeah. stick, you can hover like a little bit, but you're always moving forward. So like you know, you, yeah. you always you're always, especially with grapple shots now, you're always at an increased risk of someone hijacking you. The longer you're trying to aim up your shots, and that's obviously the whole design around them. That's the point. But um, mm-hmm. I agree, they die too. It's like three sniper shots kills you. It's like I know snipers are yeah. good at wrecking vehicles in this game, but um, it's just a bit much. Um, um, but yeah, I think I think the the overall vehicle ecosystem's all right. Warthog feels fine. Um, love Rocky the Warthog. Love the mongoose. Feels pretty good. Rockhog feels yeah. pretty good. Uh, Gungoose feels surprisingly good. Um, I love yeah. the Razorbacks. Bring like a really cool bit of flexibility. Um, P- plus, it's just more armored, right? You just like it. Just helps you, even if you don't use it for objective base. You just want to just drive in get right into the thick of it with the enemies you know you do that on a razorback and you're, you're going to make it there in time to get out and shoot some people where if you're doing a warthog you're probably going to get naded and blow up you know like there i feel like that uh, is that true uh, do they have more health I'm i don't know sure they do i thought maybe you pretty sure i didn't do. they look a little I'm bit almost more i'm almost certain they have more health um don't don't hold me to that but i'm pretty sure they do um, yeah. at least in my experience i felt like they do 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's just cool things you can do with them. Like in the power cell mode, you can load it up power cells into it. It can it can sit yeah. six people, which is which very is cool. Yeah. yeah, people can just hop in as you drive by, kind of thing. Um, Especially if if a few of those people have like power weapons too, like rocket launchers, just chilling on the back and stuff like that. A, a, a vehicle like that can feel pretty fucking OP if you fill it with Spartans that have a couple power weapons and stuff like that, not just ARs. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm happy with the Razorback. And the and the mongooses, the warthogs, everything, mm. just ghost, <clears throat> slight nerf, banshee, slight buff. That's yeah. all I change really. Some tweaks here and there. I definitely, I, f- I feel like even though they haven't made any changes, I feel like the ghosts were more oppressive in the flighting. I think people have gotten better at working around the ghosts, but I think it's only changing. But I just think like the community has got better at playing around them. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's yeah. O- again, overall good. Everything has its own space, but needs um, adjustments here and there. Uh, but it's it's such nitpicky stuff, man. For, for the most part, I mean, um, going away from the nitpicky, I guess we've got to talk about it, right? Oh, the progression. <laughs> no, I, I mean, yeah, that. But I was going to say the radar as well. Oh, the radar. I actually, yeah. honestly, haven't had a problem with it. So, so many of our friends who we've been playing with bitch about the radar on on a per death basis, and it's starting to trigger me. Yeah. I don't think it's as bad as they're making it out to be. Um, and I, I I made the point to a friend we were playing with as well. The, he was just like, oh, just make it like it was in Halo 3. And I was like, no. I was like, Halo 3 was just a fucking radar watch game. And the only time you took your eyes off the radar is when you saw a red dot on your radar. And you were like, okay, now it's time to look at my fucking screen properly. It was just, you, you weren't looking in front of you. Like It yeah. was just, you were just staring at that bottom corner. Or was it, it was top right, wasn't it? Uh, until something pinged up and then you were like okay now now i'll look to shoot someone uh, that was it it was just right on yeah. watching i didn't like it i, d- I definitely uh, feel like the people who are making those arguments don't consider what the downside of having it like why not just see the whole map why not just know where everyone is all the time you know like, it's like well come yeah. on at some point we've got it like where did, where's the good cutoff point there and like because there are times where i'm like as i'm like playing it you know we obviously played ranked as well um and, like uh, it's turned off in ranks but as we're like playing it more competitively it, uh, is my point i'm like starting to notice um, like I could have known there was someone behind me, but I was down my sights. Like I'm yeah. not going to blame the radar then. Mm-hmm. This is like I was down my sights, like, and now I'm like coming out of my radar. Um, my sights like a lot more often to like just just quickly check. There are times where yes, people do sprint up to you really quick and like double melee or something like that, and you're like, for fuck's sake, like yeah. Um, and I, but I get I don't know if having like an extra five meters on the radar would have changed that. Like I don't know, so. I get, I get the frustration, and I'd be interested to see what the community feedback continues to be around that. Um, I think it's good that they, um, that the big team battle radar is getting adjusted. And I don't know if I said earlier, but it says here it's coming shortly after launch. Yeah. Um, from and that's going from eighteen to twenty two in BTB, and they they did mention that they they saw the feedback around arena radar, but they're just going to leave it for now and just see how people get, see sort of how it goes. Um, arena uh, arena radar is a it will be a finicky thing to balance because the maps are small enough that if you make it too big you're just always going to know where people are um where they made it smaller for arena on purpose because of the map design right um otherwise you just i don't know so many frustrations come with a with a bigger radar you get you have so many more people predating you all that kind of shit and it would just get very very annoying um yeah, you'll you'll find you'll find you're getting prenaded so often if they increase the radar, and that will infuriate me. Um, so I don't and know. I think, we'll just see I, how it goes. I think it would encourage more like corner camping and like like because yeah. if everybody knows they can see each other, people are just going to be walking around crouch and they're just going to get smacked in the back like twice as often, which is not what I want. You know, I I understand the complaints here. I think sometimes it does happen, but I'm not sure if that's a you thing or a radar thing. Um, yeah, answers probably somewhere in the middle, but. Um, yeah, something to watch for sure. And I was going to ask as well because this was something that you spoke about in the you specifically spoke about in the flighting that's here on the notes. Um, was about height indication. Have you noticed height? Can you notice it now? No, nope. you can't. Uh, no. You, 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 I, you, I know you. I know you pointed it out to me, but I still, I still don't know if people are below me or above me. Like, see, I don't look at the radar close enough to distinguish it. It needs to be more obvious. Uh, right. I, I think it's. I think it's. I don't think they've changed it. They've made a note here that height indication, the, the note is reading it straight off the page. Height indication was present, but many players did not recognize its implementation. Um, since Ever since it's clicked with me, I've been like, oh yeah, 
and like I have a note. Literally, it just glows bright red if they're on your level, and it's like slightly faded out. They've got it's another. There's a line on top of it if they're above you, and it's slightly faded out if they're below you. Just keep an eye on it because it's like once you once you once it clicks, you're like, oh yeah, and you'll never have problem. You'll never have a problem with it again. Um, yeah. Okay. I guess I just need to look at it more often. Maybe I'm just doing too quick look, quick, like qu- quicker looks at my radar. Yeah. Actually, focusing too much. I just see radar, I mean, and I'm like, where? I mean, it's clearly not just you, but um, you know, there is a thing of like it is there. You just you just need to learn the the what what it looks like. Um, mm-hmm. geez. Okay, I guess progression is the last bit then. Yeah, let's do it. You want where, me to? Uh... Where do we start? I mean, yeah, I think. I mean, I think you've got more grievances than I do. So you, you, you go ahead and kick it, kick yourself. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm just. I guess I'm just not. I'm not a huge fan on on the way it's done at the moment. I don't hate it, but I'm not. I'm also just not in love with it. I'm very lukewarm. Um, on it I, I i liked i would prefer like as i said um to you that they just give you the freedom to just customize your spartan sort of however you want you know they just give you a category for helmet chest arms legs whatever you want and you just put whatever you want on right but at, at, at the moment it's kind of done it's done with cores isn't it you have like an armor set the mark 5 an armor set the mark 7 and you unlock stuff and it's like that visor. I got a red visor. I can't use that on my Mark V. I can only use that on my Mark Seven. I think that's annoying. I don't like that. I want to have a red visor on my cool helmet that you know is is really big. The aviator one, the the, the one that's all visor. I want that to be red. That would look yeah. so fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's annoying that it's not. I don't like that there's specific things tied to it. And I understand what they're going for. And I, it's like building a collection, and then you. you you know, you, you sort of, you can customize that specific arm set individually, but I just feel like it's, it's restraining you um, quite a lot at the moment. And there's not much in the game right now in terms of um, stuff you can unlock. Um, so I think, and, and, and like you said, you're like, oh, there's some cool stuff coming. Like there's, there's stuff at the end of the battle pass and all that. And you were talking about, you know, it's like building a collection and, all that and I was like okay that makes sense but then that's also <laughs> that's also going to take ages like that's going to be a long time until I feel like the customization has justified itself to me um in the way it's done months and months and months and months before I'm like oh I see what they were going for I'd rather just have the open creativity right now yeah. um I don't want to I don't want to be like in nine months time to be like oh I see what they're going for now I quite like the customization system I don't want it to take nine months mm. like maybe that's just me I, I, I mean it's, it's definitely not just you um uh and I think it's it's fair um and you know not not to sound like a, a corporate shill but I think on one on one part there is an element of like you know, obviously the coatings are monetized and you can't like pick primary and secondary colors. Obviously we get like, what is it? Like eight pipe colors you can pick from to begin with that you just get normal colors and then you get combinations after that. Um, I would, I would agree with you in that my biggest grievance at the moment is that you can't, that you get stuff for one core and not the other. Um, that can be a little yeah. bit confusing. It can be a bit disorientating. Um, I, I can, I know what they're going for and I can see it and I get it, but I'm not sure how that's all going to work out if they're introducing a new core every season it's like it's because it's like is the stuff in the battle pass just going to be for that new core then what about the other ones i've hardly got like there's loads of cool stuff i could do with my previous one you know um it's just it's just it's going to get confusing to to keep track of everything and just be like oh so i have that but not for that and wait do i have that for that and you're just going to find yourself just clicking and going through like a million sub menus to actually figure out what you've got for what fucking core Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's it's i don't i don't know I, I, I like I like the idea of there being different like of there being different cores because then you know like we have like different armor shapes then like with the Mark Seven like the Reach one versus the Mark Five like they 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 look different. Um, I like the idea of that and like we've seen there, there are if you ever have a bot on your team, bots can have stuff cross cores. But yeah, people have even posted about this on Twitter. Like bots bots have stuff on Mark Five and Mark Seven, and some of them even have the samurai armor, armor already, and they have some of that yeah. crossed with other stuff. And I guess. The the problem is, I think that they have is because the the armor sets are designed differently, is that they'll clip through different parts of the body. Um, yeah, but I do think I do think like this is super early days, and like I I am a bit like let's you know I think 
the fact that it is early days does accentuate these problems more because like we don't have that much to pick from and when you unlock a shim pad right which is like not that exciting but you're like cool at least i have some customization you go to your spot and you're like oh i can't use it for this one great <laughs> and I, so it's definitely accentuated because of that um and i think like there are like we know there's like four weekly events coming up in we don't know the time frame but i would assume it's in like the next two or three months each of them seem to have 30 like a 30 uh item free track so i think even like by the end of like some of them like your collection is going to build up and it's like you say you know i think i think this system works well when you have a lot to pick from but because at the moment we don't it's you're kind of it yeah. feels a bit clunky and it feels a bit too restrictive um yeah so i i get i totally get the feelings on it and, I'm, and i understand the frustrations around the the um the core systems i just think we need to give it a bit more breathing room first to see how it plays out if i'm still feeling this way in like another month or two i'm gonna be like yeah come on guys let's let's do something about this honesty i think the way it's going i think you will i don't think much is going to change in terms of you're going to be like man this scrapbook of spartan armor i've got is fucking ace now i think it's still going to be pretty bare bones in one in one to two months in in all honesty apart from maybe the samurai armor which is probably just a fucking set in itself you know like making yourself look like cat or making yourself look like a meal or something like that you know i don't think there'll be much well it's customization in terms of mm. and it seems to be a different core that's the thing yeah but so you'll be able to you'll be able to adjust that in and of itself like the samurai yeah look. but they'll all be different cores it's like it's like emil's will be a core right but i mean emil is a kit adjust that emil is a kit on the five the mark five yeah the reach one so okay yeah you do get in the past there are like bits of them that you can put like you can customize your core with but then there are kits which just like yeah it just it's like an overlay yeah can you change the shader on your kit you can't can you i don't know actually could i have a blue emil i don't know i hope so i don't know um and yeah also shaders are kind of shit as well by the way like I'm, I'm finding I'm just unlocking stuff and I, I'm looking at things coming up at like level 36, level 44, level 85. And I'm like, well, this is just a slightly different red than the base red I've had since launch. Like, there are definitely some like that. But there's potential there. There's, there's potential some cool there. ones in there. I've seen though, the esports ones. The esports ones look fucking fantastic. And that goes to show, like, that future shaders will and can look fantastic like because because of those but they're just not in the game right now and i i i, I don't know and i just don't feel like they're going to be in the game for a little a little mm. while longer but. yeah i don't know I, I do think there are i do think there are some cool ones in the battle pass um that I, i'm looking at i'm like that's gonna be sick when I like can can get that and like customize that or whatever. But there there are some. There are definitely a handful. There are some that we but it was like the the blue one that we it was like at level tw- uh, like you know fourteen oh, or whatever it was, and it looks it looks just bad. like the the base one. And I was I like having a look. Distinguish. Yeah, I, I could. So I had to look, but I figured it out, and it was because the um the 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 top left and right hexagons are black, so like your shoulder pads stay black rather than go blue yeah. as well. But really it, minimal difference. Crazy. It's literally like fucking spot the difference. It's yeah. fucking, it's, you have to stare at it side by side for like 10 minutes. Actually, you know, it's a fucking difference. Yeah. Um, but yeah, though there, there are definitely some cool ones in there. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying it's, it's all garbage, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just a little bit underwhelmed right now. In it's probably my only problem. It's my only real um, problem with the game, I would say. And it's definitely all there because there is so much that you can put on. Yeah. Like there, there are so many things you can adjust and like even like putting your own emblem on your armor and your guns and all that kind of stuff. There's so much there, but there's just, it's just nothing, right? It's just like someone's just giving you an empty scrapbook and they're like, well, you know, fill it with pictures. You know, six years time, you're going to love this scrapbook because it's filled with all the holidays you went on, but it's going to be shit kind of yeah for a long time until you fill it yourself um and i think i also think it'd be kind of cool if you could put shader per piece blue shader on my gauntlets red shader on my chest yellow shader on my legs i don't like how it's just one shader for the entire armor you know sort of destiny 2 style right you can yeah. mix and match. You can look however you want. You can apply a shader to the helmet as apply a shader to the chest piece. I think that'd be kind of cool. 
I'm with you. But I mean, obviously, I think you know the way that they're designed at the moment is that it you know it, it colors in each piece for you on the hexagon. Um, but I mean, that that's like part of like a lot of like that, like the Halo Reddit, which is the worst place on the planet. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not nice. <laughs> they're like. You know, oh, just let us like color each piece of your of my armor, like no, and it's like, like I I get it, like I get it, I get it. I'm not gonna be a, a dickhead, like I I get it. Um, you know, you could do this in other Halos, but quite frankly, you know, name me another free to play um game of this measure that allows you to just do that. You, there isn't one. You don't in Apex. There's no you. You have like standard like colors, which are the white ones, and then you unlock shit. You have to either buy it or you level up a lot or you buy the battle pass, whatever. Um, and I know that's the same for other other games as well Fortnite is like you don't color shit in you don't get to choose um and it's like because i just feel like it's i i know i understand like the face value argument of like oh it's i can't believe they're monetizing colors and it's like well really because like in any other game it would just be a skin it would just be a skin it's just like mm-hmm. this instead it's coatings um and we've we've already yeah. gone over like the, the the pros and cons of this and like you know i, I get the cons um but i think there, there are some pros there as well you know it it adds another layer to the progression like if you took that out and just said right I, I would just make my Spartan white and blue and they would stay that way for maybe three months until I'm like, I want to look at something different. You know, mm-hmm. it, it undermines the progression system. I like that when they bring these events in, there are going to be coatings that come out. I'm going to be like, I, I need to get that. And like, then I'm going to yeah. have it. And only 5% of the player base are going to have that. And, you know. Um, oh yeah, for I sure, think, man. Yeah. I think that's cool. So I, I don't have any gripes with the whole, you know, if it's cool enough, I'll pay for it. It's a free game. These people got to make money somehow. Like I don't, I'm, I'm a hundred percent with you. Like I, we, we were talking about this. There's so much expense that goes into just, well, just the fucking, they made the game, right? So many people made this game. All those people are on fucking salaries, all the people, the server upkeep, all this kind of stuff. Like it's, there's a reason these things are monetized. Like, Otherwise, it, it wouldn't be profitable. The fact is, they're giving us a product. They have to make profit on it. It's a fucking company. Like, I, I people who are just like, just think they're entitled to have everything for free are just delusional. Like you said, do you work for free? No. You don't go in and clock nine to five and just be like, oh, it's fine if you don't pay me today. Don't worry. I kind of yeah. enjoyed myself. You know, yeah. It's just like, no, that's not the way the world works. <laughs> um, so it's like, I don't have an issue with that. And a perfect example of that at the esports skins, I've been so I've been so close. I've been so <laughs> close to buying one because they look so fucking cool. And if they do a good job of making it look cool, I'll buy it. I've done yeah. the same for Apex. I don't have an issue with that. Um, and and I stuff- know with the event, the events coming up, I was like, I need those fucking Christmas skins. Like that <laughs> pink, that pink, like cyan and white. That's gonna look cool. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna spend money on that. Or maybe it's in the free track. I don't know. But like I'm looking forward to that. My issue is is everything I see is that that frame of mind. I'm looking forward to it. I don't have it yet, you know. Like there's just there's just nothing there at the moment. There's yeah. not really much exciting there at the moment. Yeah. At the end of the battle pass, there is there's some pretty cool stuff. But like the way the battle pass progression's going, I'm not going to reach there for yeah. a couple of months. Well, that's what I was going to say. It's, that's, like, it's another thing that's accentuating it, isn't it? Because there's a whole conversation around the slow battle pass. That's like it, it makes it even worse because you're like, oh my god, like I'm getting like one pe- like a glove every like two yeah. days. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of. Um, it all makes sense. I hear everyone's concerns and I totally get it. I do, I do just think we need to give the game a bit of breathing room, you know, let it get, you know, cause there are those weekly capstones as well. Complete all your weeklies and get a Pete, like a cosmetic, like a coating or a, or a yeah. weapon coating, you know, there's that as well. There's the events. I just think we need cool to, stuff. we need to get into that kind of rhythm and then we can start looking at it holistically and be like, okay, even with all of this in mind, I still don't think that this is feeling right. Um, so yeah. Because we're, oh, yeah, you know, we're on day like minus 15 at the moment, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. My, my, my judgments are, yeah, they're all assumptions and predictions and stuff like that. Obviously I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of slamming it on what I, I feel it's going to be like, but I don't know what it's going to be like. It might surprise me. Um, I'm just, I'm just giving it an estimation on how it's progressing now. Um, and just kind of giving my own sort of time frame on it um but yeah it still it still might surprise me um 
but yeah, it's 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 not awful. I'm just not a huge fan of the way it's done. The the whole core thing I think is is kind of what is triggering me the most at the moment. Um, yeah, I haven't agree. really had anything too exciting, and we've put well over a day of game time into it already. Um, yeah, I I, I I don't know. I part of it is like because I like you say, even though the stuff and but that has always like that is just like with Halo, you do just get. Like, we got, like, a fucking screen on our chest, and I was like, let's go! And like, another one is like, a screen on your wrist, and I'm like, like, fucking hype for it. Even though it's like, you know, it's really not much, but, like, you know, it does give you just those little bit more of customization here and there. But more than anything else, I, I just love how the armors and Spartans look. Do you know what I mean? Like, you see them oh, standing there, and you're right. like, fuck me, they look awesome. Um, So mm-hmm. I, it does, it, it definitely helps that they just, they nail the that also in the look. That also triggers me a little bit as well because I like the Mark Seven suit so much more than the Mark Five suit, but I don't have anything for my Mark Seven. I have nothing. <laughs> yeah. I have the red visor, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll so it's just like I, I'm kind of picking the Mark Seven, no, the Mark Five, even though I don't even like it as much in terms of how it looks in general, just because I have more stuff for it. Um, and it's still not that much, but it's just, it's something. I, like, I, I feel like I have to put it on because it's just, <laughs> it's one of the very few things I've actually earned in the game. So Yeah, I'm with, um, you. I'm with you. But yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely, like, the armor design is is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I do really like it. Um, but yeah, just some discrepancies here and there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as well, as, as we sort of cap the conversation off, um, since, and I guess as a bit of a segue into the campaign previews, really, um, there, I've seen that there are, and this is, isn't really a spoiler, but there's there's 32 bits of armor you can find like hidden around Zeta Halo. Um, so that, I mean, that's obviously something which, given that these two products are technically launching on the same day, that's something that's going to accelerate that feeling um, of like having stuff unlocked in multiplayer. Um, so I just wanted to drop that in there as we sort of finish off um yeah i guess oh, that's annoying. i guess the, the only, let's let's just sort of make this quick because the only, the only last yeah. thing i wanted to speak about was the actual speed of progression right um and the fact that you know they patched it the other day um on day two to make it so you get to get rid of some of the harder ones and that you get 50 xp fixed per match rather than the way it did it before which was uh it would go complete one match complete two matches complete three complete four and you know it would get bigger in time so what are your, what are your thoughts on that uh much better it's gone from being so painfully slow to slow at least i'm seeing seeing the bar moving kind of thing yeah exactly it's still slow but it's not it's not painfully slow it's not like um and and i i think it would be even more infuriating if the game just wasn't so fun like i'm not (laughs) that bothered because i go into a game and i hop out of a game with a big old fucking grin on my face so i don't really care that much but like if the game wasn't like that and the progression was that slow, I'd be crazy triggered. Um, so it it has that going for it. Um, yeah, but doubt. yeah, it's it's still it's still slow. Um, but then you know there are things you could do to to combat that as well. Like I know next week, let's be smart about it. The challenges will all come back back in on Monday. All the weeklies, I'm gonna be like, lads, what's the day everyone's gonna be on? You know, like, let's get a solid few hours in. I'm going to pop an XP booster and I'm going to smash those weeklies. All my XP is going to get doubled and I'm probably going to see a lot of progression in my battle pass. Like, there are ways you can plan around it. They give you the tools and it's just like, you know, you can be a little bit smart about it and you can increase your XP gains by quite some margin. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, we'll have to see how that plays out because we've yet to have like a full fresh week with, with the... um with the changes they've made with, mm. with like oh, the weeklies and stuff. They buffed it to an hour as well, didn't they? The XP change. I forgot yeah, to mention yeah, that. They yeah, they buffed it to an hour, yeah. So I think next week we'll come back to this and we'll just be like, how was our experience with the changes they made with a fresh week of, of challenges using an XP boost maybe? How did it feel? Um, but right now, yeah, it's it's slow. It's, it is pretty slow. Yeah, yeah. I think there's um my, my, my two like things that i would say about it is that they need to just have another look at the I, i'm okay with the challenge system like honestly i am um but i just mm-hmm. think there's maybe and it's a good chunk of them that are a bit stupid there's like 30 percent of them are like just ridiculous that they're, they're way too specific i'm okay with some being specific you know like um like having one out of like five or one out of ten that requires me to go out my way to try and do something i'm okay with 
any more than that, it yeah. gets a bit, you know, obnoxious. That you know, like, and some of them just don't mix well with the sandbox. Like I was saying earlier, the, the challenge to kill people with a plasma rifle is like that doesn't make sense. Like the bolt, or whatever it's called. Yeah, um, it's like that, I'm just, I'm never going to do that. Yeah, and I think that's a really good fix. What we said earlier, like either make it point based or damage based. That would work way better. Um, mm-hmm. So I think they need to look at how they do that. And I appreciate the way that they do these weeklies is that you have a set of easy ones and then they get replaced by medium ones and they get replaced by hard ones. Um, but I think they need to have a look at yeah. those challenges and make them so that they're, like I've had some sitting in my dock for so long now because like, it's just I'm just never going to get them done and I don't want to waste a reroll right now. But you have that option, of course, but still. Um, they're, they're oddly specific, yeah. And, and they're kind of annoying because I know like there's one which is like uh, destroy a ghost right? Doesn't sound that bad. I think you have to do like three. So it's like destroy three, three ghosts. But that's, it's, that is sometimes very out of your control. Yeah. You're playing a BTB match. There are 12 other fucking players on your squad and you don't know when a ghost is spawning. You don't know when an enemy's in one. There's a, there's a fucking 11 out of 12 chance that someone else is going to kill that ghost before you. You know, like there are so many other players I don't know. It's just, it, it feels very much out of your control. And mm-hmm. then it's always in the back of your mind. It makes you play different um, because you're, you're, you're searching for this or you're, or you're picking up pulse carbines when it just doesn't fit the play style or how you should be playing the map. There, there are just things like, I don't mind destroy a ghost, destroy a chopper, just make it one, just, just one and done. Like don't make it three. Yeah. Small, small little changes like that are fine. Yeah. In my opinion. So, um, I do. It, it does definitely does need tweaking, and I and I have to take a bit of an an L. Well, not really, because I was going to say I have to take a bit of an L. Because when we spoke about this in the the flighting preview, I said like you know let's just wait and see. Generally, challenge systems are fine because a lot of the community were losing their shit because obviously they haven't played a game since Halo Three. Um, so. <laughs> And I said, you know, it depends. Challenges are okay, it just depends how they're done. Because as you know, I would frequently lose my shit about some challenges in Apex. Some of them are still annoying, but like they're manageable. Mm-hmm. But like the whole drop in a certain location, like fuck me, get off. Um, yeah. And some of them, are, some of them are reminiscent of that. It's like some of these are not implemented well, and so they, they I think they need to have a look at that. And the other half of what I was going to say was we spoke about this as well. Um, that is that we feel that some progress should be performance based. Um, I don't, and I don't. I don't even necessarily think it needs to be self-performance based. I'm okay with it just being wins instead of it being, you know, if they want to keep it at, this, at a similar pace instead of it being 50 per game, make it 25 for a loss and 75 for a win. Like incentivize me to win, man. Make me feel good when I win, or 100 for a win and 50 yeah. for a loss. You know, it, it, and I think that uh, that would go a long way um, to, to helping as well. I also think it'd be kind of cool if they get, they tied XP to um, badges. Yep, I think badges can play a role in kills, it. Flag carrier, you captured the flag, um, you assists, uh, all that kind of stuff. Like, not don't just obviously do it for the kills because then it's just going to encourage people to camp and get kills. Do it for like playing the objective and stuff like that. Um, it'd be it'd be kind of cool just to have, even if it's very small. There's like it's like f- it's like fucking two XP per per like assist badge or something. 10 XP for a killing spree, 20 XP for capping the flag, you know, but it just accumulates at the end of the game. Right. Mm. Um, I think that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see some, and I think having, having it tied to a win a little bit would yeah. increase, oh, 100%. it would increase player behavior because that, we've spoke about this. There are times where we've played with randos or, or when I've solo queued where people have run up to me with the flag, dropped it in front of me <laughs> and run away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've, I've I've had someone just toss me the oddball. Like, I don't fucking want this. Yeah, it's you just know, like because I, I can't I can't I can't click on heads with this. Yeah, and then, <laughs> then, they, then they just run around the corner and get their head shot off by a sniper, and it's like great. <laughs> yeah, so like I think if if there was that incentive, as that if people started seeing that pop up on their screen, like you know, win plus a hundred, they'd be like, oh, actually, I want to win this because I want to progress my battle pass more. That just makes mm-hmm. sense. That just makes yeah, sense. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think we'll move on from there. We've, um, I'm out of breath um, speaking about all of that Halo so multiplayer, much, but yeah, so the, o- the overall takeaways, guys, go download it. It's really good. It's really good. Um, there yeah, are, believe it or not, it's free. It's somehow. free. Unbelievable. Yeah, um, really good. And I'm liking, um, I'm liking how good the three four three are being with sort of listening to feedback and and act got it quickly. So we see how it all pans out. But the the foundation here is so fucking solid that. Um, 
and I don't mean any foundation in a bad way. It's 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 a good package, but what's there is it's so good, and it excites me to think what they could add in the future: more vehicles, more equipment, more everything, cosmetics, whatever, weapons. Yeah, 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 for sure. Amazing. All right. Well, um, we also had this week. We've had we've had campaign bits of bobs coming through for the last few weeks, but the embargo was properly released, and the press got to play. From what I can tell, the first four. Oh, actually, they just got access to the game from what I understand, because some members of the press have actually just played through and completed it, but they can only speak about the first four hours. Um, yeah. So my take from all of this, there was a really good, where is it? There was a really good uh, summary that somebody did on Reddit here. Yeah, from Smunzer. Sorry for stealing your comment, bro. Uh, summary, mostly positive, some caveats. Only includes the first few hours of the campaign. Number one, basically everyone agrees that the game is really fun for the first four hours. Uh, unsurprising if you've played the multiplayer. Number two, the game looks decent, but still has some presentation issues, particularly with lighting and FX. Number three, reviewers largely agree that the open world nature of the campaign works really well with Halo, aka the silent cartographer, the video game. Even if it has some Ubisoft light vibes for the optional side quests, hoping for some more variety in the latter half of the game. My takeaway from this was overwhelmingly positive. There were like Mm -hmm. um, some outlets, and I think like you said, the one you watched skill up that had like some caveats here and there, but still overall described the whole thing as really fun. I think we said Skillup said this might be his favourite Halo campaign ever, which is pretty high fucking praise. So um, what did you think from what you saw and what you heard and everything else? Um, yeah, I mean, from what I heard, generally speaking, um, people, yeah, it was very positively received, um, from what I could tell. Um, the majority of the praise seemed to come from just the sandbox and just the gameplay, uh, and just how the world is built, and, and the, the AI of all as these. well, and the AI. Yeah, yeah, I did hear some some good things about the AI, um, and just how you approach all your combat scenarios. Right, that that's what was very highly praised um, from what I could tell. Um, yeah, like I said, the, the the one I watched all the way in in the most detail was Skill Ups, um, and he he had a, he had a few gripes about some of the characters not feeling all the way there for him quite yet. But he was just he's reserving the fact that you know they'll go deeper, um, maybe. But they didn't necessarily catch his attention right off the bat. You know, Atriox or whatever his name is is just a guy screaming. Into oh, Escheron Ram right now. Yeah. Uh, Escheron, sorry, yeah. Um, it's just a guy screaming into a hologram right now, right? He's not really, he's quite one dimensional right now, but I'm sure his motives will, will, will come into play as you progress through the campaign. I think, um, yeah. So, from what, yeah. From what I've seen, like what I've seen skill up is um, in the minority with with, with that. Um, all the other stuff yeah. I've read, people are like, Eshram is really feeling very, very cool. And I like, again, you know, I, I don't know, but like we know just from the trailers, we know he's kind of like, he's happy the chief is back kind of thing, even though he's like kind of a, you know, like he is just barking at you a lot of the time, but he's like, do what you can, mate, because we're going to, we're going to have a showdown at some point. Um, yeah. It's like a challenge, isn't it? It's a pissing contest. Totally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there are some things, but like we said, like overall high praise. I think there, there are some things he, I think he might've said at some place that he, he wasn't sure the sandbox, he felt the sandbox was really good, but the open world was maybe not doing as much for him as it could have. And yeah, he said it felt a bit vacant. Right. And that's uh, again, like yeah. having listened to other people, they've said that they've come across loads of emergent things. You know, I'm looking at some other um, headlines from other outlets here, you know, from venture beat. So from Jeff Grubb, Halo infinite feels like master chief's breath of the wild. Um, from the Washington post, the Halo infinite campaign is basically one huge, excellent Halo level. Um, Polygon uh, Halo Infinite's campaign is equal parts familiar and surprising five hours in Um, you know just all of these really really positive uh, things PC gamer Halo Infinite might just pull off an open world rebirth you know so um, I mean that's this isn't me like trying to say skill ups wrong at all but uh, you know all I've noticed is that some of the caveats he added with the game aren't necessarily things that were shared by other people but you know opinions they do that (laughs) so Nonetheless, I think we can. What, what, what did you What did you think though of like the footage that you saw? Um, the, well, yeah, I mean, the, the footage I saw, I didn't have too much of an issue with how everything was being laid out in terms of, you know, like I actually to a to a point kind of disagreed with with how he felt the character development was. I think I think all the characters are quite charming in 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 their own way. Um, I agree. The, the the pilot that works alongside Master Chief being just like a nervous fucking wreck, 
and he's just like i just i just went off this fucking crazy ass <laughs> planet and yeah. last chief's like just give me a pistol and i'll yeah. kill thousands like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's a nice like give and take between the two i quite like it um and you know i don't mind the the, the new ai seems seems quite cool she's 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 a bit quirky and maybe i love maybe them. throws in maybe throws in maybe a, a, a couple too many uh cheesy one-liners um but overall like it you know it lightens the mood up right so it's not just like some gritty fucking shooter you know she makes it a little bit more light-hearted and stuff like that um and you know just brings more of a human characteristic to chief who otherwise let's be honest is just a silent killing machine um and uh yeah so i quite like it i think Esheron's quite cool i think he's intimidating and right it's just like it right now it just seems like like i said it's just a pissing contest between the two um which i think is is quite cool you know that's kind of what i was hoping halo 5 would have been with spartan lock and all that sort of thing i was just like oh damn this is kind of cool like head to head like is this guy better than chief and it was just like that just never fucking happened like it just <laughs> never materialized in any format yeah. So I'm hoping this will deliver on 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 that regard of what Halo Five was kind of looking for. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the sandbox just looks insane, right? It just looks really really fun. Um, I do agree that, um, with what you said of obviously it's going to feel so much better going through the sandbox, approaching these camps and levels with another player. So it's it's a real shame that you have to do it solo on launch. Um, that's obviously a bit of a negative. That's a pill I'm going to have to swallow. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I think it looks great. Yeah. No, no, no issues. It's colorful. It's fun. It's creative. The sandbox looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, I think, I think the I'm loop, I think the loop just looks fun, right? I like that you can go mm-hmm. off the path and go to these bases and take out like a, you know, like an elite, like a really powerful elite, get his energy sword. That's like, you know, a, a buffed up version, you know, stuff like that. I, just, I, I think it, it works well into, into the game. Um, uh, the the only thing that is like nagging at me is like I don't think the repulsor's in the campaign. I haven't seen any footage of the repulsor, and I based oh. on the skill tree menu, there's there's five, and there is the grappling hook, shield capacity, uh, drop wall, thrust, and threat sensor. Um, and I don't That's see a, a sixth one. I've never seen the repulsor. Ah. Nobody's mentioned it. I keep asking on like forums and stuff, and nobody's getting back to me. So I don't think it's in. I don't think it's in. I I don't know why. Maybe they just found difficulty with. Um, it being a bit too overpowered, like bopping people off the edge, like one banging them, stuff like that. Yeah, um, how it interacts with the AI and everything. Yeah, don't know, but I still think it's a shame because they could have just made them not travel that far. Um, and most Repulse of them is fun, man. Yeah, that sucks if that's not going to be in the campaign. Yeah. Um, so, but having said that, does it really have a like other than bopping people? I mean, I guess you can deflect projectiles and stuff. Yeah, I don't you know. can like, deflect like a wraith fucking ball back or something. You could definitely do some pretty cool stuff. That, if, Maybe. If, if it's not there, I think it will be missed. It's like, a bit of a bummer. Yeah, exactly. I think it will be missed. Um, but like maybe it's hidden in one of the upgrades. Because I know, for example, there's been a video going around of um, there being like a ground pound kind of thing in the grapple hook tree. And one of the, it's like the second mm-hmm. or third upgrade. It's like hold, hold RB while you're grappling. And Chief, it goes like zooms out into third person and Chief like winds back and does this like big punch and like a shockwave. Um, nice. So like maybe, maybe that's like one of them for the drop ball, like hold down while deploying a drop ball to repulse or something. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah. But I'm not going to get my hopes up. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to get my hopes up, but because um, I think we would have seen it by now. But that that's my like only reservation. Um, other than that, I know I keep saying it, but I just think this game looks really gorgeous. Um, I know a lot of people don't feel like like technically it looks as impressive. Like, you know, it's not focusing on rendering thousands of blades of grass. It's just the overall world looks so clean. Um, and the color I just, palette's lovely. The color palette is so nice. You know, I'm and I, you know, I said this before, yes, it's just the art style is doing a lot for me. You know, that it, it, its whole is more than the sum of its parts kind of thing. Um, the direction is just the art direction on it is just like magnificent, you know. Um, so I'm I'm really getting quite excited for this. I'm I'm so excited that I've got some time off. Um I'm excited to play it through solo, and then I think we'll have to um we'll have to play it legendary on co-op <laughs> when um when the time comes. Absolutely, yeah. That'll be fun. Um the uh I'm hoping that the extra time that they have for to for co-op allows them to do it in like a proper way. Like it would be, a lot of people have been saying it would be cool if um, 
you just played as your multiplayer Spartan. I've always found it a bit immersion breaking that you just played four Chiefs before. You know, yeah, I liked it in five. In what there was one of the few things I liked about five is that you played as different Spartans. Like yeah. I don't. As, long, as much as people like like playing Chief and everything, like I'm okay with playing fucking Blue Team, which is Chief's like old school like Spartan group, and they all have like different loadouts and things like that. Um, yeah, I thought that was cool. Yeah, so, I was like, happy with that. Yeah, bring, uh, uh, I hope they can do it in like a proper way where they're like involved in cutscenes and stuff, you know. So, um, mm-hmm. overall, I'm really impressed with how they, this is turning out, and you know this this is crazy because they fucking they've done it. Like, I can't believe previews are coming in for Halo Infinite campaign and they're like overwhelmingly positive considering where we were at this time last year and the campaign and the multiplayer's killing it. They they were yeah. o- operating on a knife edge and they f- they've done it. They fucking did it, man. I mean, unless there's something, you know, really shit that but like no signs are pointing towards there being something bad here. Um, so. Definitely looks like they, uh, well, they've nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And we'll have to do some... Um, score predictions as we get closer to the time so we'll see how we get on with that I'm hoping i'm hoping it just i just want it to beat halo 4 i've said, I've said i think i've said this before which got 87 so it really should right but yeah we'll see you'd hope so we'll see okay I'm sick and fucking tired of halo let's talk about something else let's um there was some stuff I wanted to talk about, about sort of like the anniversary and like one year later for the Xbox. Um, how much time are we? I'm already quite late, but I think maybe we can save that for another time. You know, just sort of how the first year of the Xbox has been. Um, we'll just move on to the news and see where we're at by the end of that. So let's get on to obviously Forza, the other Xbox game studio game that's um, launched in the last few weeks. Um, Forza had 10 million players in the first week. <laughs> <laughs> nice burp dude thanks what's that about well i think i'm no expert here but i think around 10 million people logged on and played it <laughs> yeah but like why <laughs> like, just... what toxic you don't like forza no. i love forza um it's just a combination of it just being well, one, just being an excellent showcase of the hardware, right? Um, and two, it being on Games Pass. And three, just it being a pretty chill, easy to pick up sort of vibe game that I think a lot of people can just get on board with. Um, and it's just so accessible with it with it being on Games Pass and just, just being, you can just click on it and download it. Apart from the 100 plus gigabyte um, wait time. Uh, yeah. It doesn't. It, I mean, it, it does surprise me because that's an insane amount of people. But it kind of doesn't at the same time. Like I can see, I can see why. Um, and you know, play playing it myself. I'm not a huge fan of car games. Um, it's it's fun as fuck. Like I've I put probably four or five hours into it. I hopped on it again. It was it wasn't? Yeah, it was yesterday. It was yesterday during d- during the day when I was kind of I was so burnt out in Halo. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I played that a little bit and just sort of kind of vibed and chilled for a couple of hours and it was great fun. It, it's a spectacle to look at. It's just... It just, just plays fun, well. Man. Yeah, yeah I've, I've, yeah, I've actually been kind of having an itch to like still play it, which is never something I've had with a Forza game. Like, I've just been having like... I, yeah, it's, it's just amazing. Shit, like, I, I know this isn't a direct comparison, but like when we say that racing games don't, don't do this well... Um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So that's the one that came out. Is that the one that came out on the Switch? The Deluxe? Mm, or Wii U? The Deluxe, yeah. Yeah. Deluxe was Wii U, I think. So Mar- yeah. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was the fastest selling Mario Kart game in history. Uh, and it sold about 1.2 million in three days. Okay, that's sold. You know, let's assume that's the same trajectory for a week. We're talking about 3 million sales in three days, which is obviously bonkers in terms of sales. The fact that Forza had 10 million players in a week is just nuts and like this is this has got to be this is a games pass thing right i don't know how forza horizon would have fared if in terms of sales like if it was just left to i doubt it would have hit those mario kart numbers but probably not i think it it really opens that can on how good games that are less accessible or more quote-unquote niche uh get so much more attention when they're on Games Pass. 
you know people can just dip into that sort of stuff and mm-hmm. that's such a big number like that's absolutely mental i don't even know if halo infinite's going to hit those numbers it, it would be it would be tough i mean i yeah i don't know someone will have the number somewhere and i'm sure we'll hear about it over the next week um and i'm sure they'll be big but um it's it's just crazy the amount the, the effect that critical reception can have on this I mean, and i mean obviously it looks gorgeous um but yeah and you know just for comparison's sake sea of thieves which came out in january 2018 celebrated 30 million players i think in the last few weeks as well so obviously a huge number but that's been out two years Forza hit it in a week yeah <laughs> like, what the that's fuck <laughs> um yeah. you know and you could argue that sea of thieves you know has like had a slow burn because it had a pretty weak launch um and it was only really about a year maybe a year and a half into it that the game started really um I think sort of resonating with the core gamer, but yeah, man, that is such a bonkers number. Such mm-hmm. a bonkers number. Now, no game award though. No game award, and that is something I want to come back around to. But the first thing is that we have like a, we have a fun segment. We did this for Deathloop, and we've decided that we're going to make this a segment now. And this segment is whenever Xbox releases a game, whenever there's an X- Xbox Game Studios or Partners game, um, we go onto Metacritic. We click on the negative user reviews, and I just have a quick scan of some of the zero out of tens. <laughs> because like it. um, it's it's very entertaining. So mm-hmm. this one comes from LG Raven, zero out of ten. As a drifter, this is the worst game in the franchise by miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. In no world are any of the changes good. Thank you, LG Raven. What a um, nice guy. The Lucky Nickel, 3 out of 10, says, The game is literally the same as Forza Horizon 4. Not worth the time nor effort to purchase. Game over, Forza Horizon 4. That's true. I basically... I live in England, and it's basically the same as Mexico. He's right. <laughs> <laughs> Your Mum's Bills, 0 out of 10. Yet another case of a game being overhyped for no good reason. <laughs> it's basically Forza 4 with a slightly different setting. <laughs> Oh, dude. This best. one comes from Benny86. Zero out of ten. I really don't like the hipster event story again and again. Please make something new, more and adult. There is so much potential. Zero out of ten. <laughs> the hipster story. I, I don't understand. You're just a driver. Cyber47 says, So boring copy paste since <laughs> Forza 3. Playground games really going down. Zero out of ten. <laughs> God, he's so right. <laughs> Can't believe it takes them this long to develop games when all they do is Control C, Control V. It's insane. <laughs> Nick's on says disgusting quality. Zero out of ten. <laughs> what does that even mean? In what way is it? What does he mean by quality? What is it? Bobby No Way four three two one says amazing game. Graphics are incredible, even on Series S. Totally immersed in the game from the start. Excellent job, Playground Games. Four out of ten. Four out of ten. <laughs> what? Did he just misclick? <laughs> Not like that's a misclick. <laughs> I'm just... I feel like I'm in a black hole. Like None of this makes sense. Um, uh, it's just all incoherent nonsense. But it's fucking hilarious. My god, that 30 FPS is absolutely horrendous, and even with it, the quality is not that much better than Forza Horizon 4. What a waste. Fable is in danger. 1 out of 10. <laughs> Fable is in danger. Also, there's a 60 <laughs> FPS option. Just use that. <laughs> Idiot. Oh, no. This is... That's right. We'll stop there. Fable get... is in trouble. Fable is in trouble. 1 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> this is any indication on Fable. Yeah. It's in trouble. I'm going to review this bad day because I'm worried about Fable. I'm excited for Fable to be a street. A street PC fan Fable 40. Car. Yeah. PC fan 40 says, really not missing anything here at all. Xbox fans need to demand, demand better from Phil Spencer. Zero out of ten. This place is so weird. Oh, Philly. <laughs> Philly. Philly developed such a bad game solely himself. How dare he put out a 92 open critic game? That is rubbish. Yeah, it's fucking abysmal, isn't it? 
So funny. <laughs> okay. I could be here for hours, yeah, so I'm just going to stop. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so fun. Podcast is becoming very toxic. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that. Yeah, that comes on to sort of the um, the whole game awards thing, um, which I am I am salty about. I'm 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 going to put that out there. I'm salty about it. I'm not happy that Forza Horizon hasn't got a um, nomination here. Um, and I've been hearing quite a lot of stuff about it. But I guess before uh, we sort of go into that a bit further, I just wanted to go over what the candidates were. Where are they? Have I have I got it in my note? Yeah, here they are. So. In case you haven't been following, uh, there were six nominees for the Game Awards this year for, for, for the Game of the Year. Obviously, there are lots of different categories, and obviously, Forza Horizon was nominated for Best Racing Game because, like, duh. Um, and those six nominations were Deathloop, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. How are we feeling about okay, those so noms? I, okay, so I have to say it. There are two on there <laughs> which have no right in being on there. Um... And that is one Resident Evil Village. Great game. No gripes with it. That it doesn't it doesn't need to be for the game of the year. No. Mm. Not that good. Not that good. I was saying I might give it like a seven and a half, maybe an eight if I'm feeling nice about it. It's fun. No, the fact it's on the list over something like Forza Horizon 5 is a joke. <clears throat> and then obviously I haven't played this one. But what the fuck's Metroid Dread doing up there? <laughs> That seems like the most fucking basic bitch side-scrolling shooter I've seen. I've seen so many indie developers do a better version of this type of game. What's yeah. it doing up there? Uh, yeah, Why is it there? I, like you said, I, I've not played it either, and I don't want to come. I don't want to shit on someone else's fun, but yeah, I, like from what I've seen, I, I do. Doesn't look fun at all. It doesn't look good. It just, it just, I just, I feel like I've just seen so many of them. And I just feel like I've seen so many do that style of, of platforming, side-scrolling shooter in such a much, just a much more interesting way, uh, whether it's art style or just the world it's built in. I've just seen it done. I just, I look at that game and I just see, so, it just it's like a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> It's just it just seems so boring to me. It just seems so uninspired. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, dude. Is that just me? <laughs> no, it's not just you. We, we, dread equals oatmeal. We we watched not the clickbait. No, even before any of this game of the year or re- re- review stuff, we watched the trailer at E3, didn't we, or something? It was yeah. And we were like, "What is this? Like, this looks gross. Mm. Um, like it didn't look good at all. And it's just, I don't know. I don't know." It's, I know it's reviewed well, and from what I've heard, the people who like Metroid like love it, and it's the best-selling Metroid so far. Like in the franchise, it's, it's done the best. Um, but it just didn't look good, you know. I, I this is to me, this is, and I know I'm sounding like a bit of a twat, but this is like a Nintendo effect thing. This is like a game which would probably be like 75, but it's a Nintendo game, and people have nostalgia for it, so it gets yeah. like 88 or something, you know. And it's like okay, um, fine. So it's, I don't know it's for sure. I don't. I don't think it's a bad game. I just, like I said, I just look at it and I just see. It, I, it's just. It's so uninspired to me. It just doesn't. It doesn't really seem like it's breaking any any boundaries in any way that previous games of that genre have done in the past. Yeah, like you said, it's just. It's just got Metroid slapped onto it, so it, it's automatically going to score an eight or above, right? Yeah, if they called it fucking. Fucking Thomas Dread, Judge Dread, <laughs> I don't know something like that. O- Oatmeal yeah, Dread, with that. Oatmeal Dread probably would have got a seventy, like you <laughs> said, like yeah. But hey, hey-ho. yeah. I mean, clearly there's something that something there that we don't get, but you know, just and we're just looking in from the outside. But it, you know, it just looks like a big bowl of blah. So um, obviously, I think uh, to be honest, I don't think it takes who deserves to be there. I, I've heard so many people speak about it over and over again. I've played it like. I played a lot of it, and I think it's great. It's really good fun. It's like one of the best like co-op mm. games I've played in a while. It is very, very good. But fuck me, does it drag on? It doesn't stop, mm. and like the dialogue and the story just gets so old, so fast. It's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. and then there's this like Spanish book that comes along, and he's like, you know, speaks, 
and he's just like, you need to show each other your devotion. You need uh, his, uh, commitment. And it just like, it just goes on and it's like, shut the fuck up. The levels are really fun. <laughs> the play phase, the, the uh, gameplay is really good. But like, it just like that sort of shit, it was starting to drag on me. I think we're like t- maybe 13 hours in. So we can't be too far from the end. Um, but like god i just i get like an instant headache when the game tries to stop for a cutscene because like it's just i don't know like it's the the, same old shit i don't know if you know about like because the premise is that like your two parents getting a divorce saving a marriage yeah yeah right and like you get turned into little toys and you're trying to like go back into human form but there's if i am near the end nothing has fucking happened like the, the 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 characters are the same as they were before, so I'm like, so I think this is going to be the sort of thing they would get to the last hour, and they're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't get divorced, or they're going to be, it's going to be like yeah. a, it's going to be like a null story where they're like, <laughs> well, you know, we can still be good friends and still get divorced, and it's going to be like, okay, well, that also yeah. was predictable, so it's like, I don't know, or I know you, fuck it, let's stay together for the kid, <laughs> right? Yeah, and it's like I know these games aren't like there for the story, but because it's so in your face. And they like have sometimes there are like these these cutscenes. It just like it feels like someone's putting a drill to my head and screw driving into my fucking temporal lobe. So it yeah. is good. I'd give it like a seven point five, maybe an eight if I'm feeling generous. It is it is a really fun, genuine, genuinely good cop game. Is it a game of the year contender? I I don't think so. Um, I, I I can appreciate the fun other people have had with it, and I can appreciate why some people would like it to be there. Personally, I don't think. I, and again, I don't think it should be there over Forza Horizon Five. Just, just to be clear, um, yeah. there are there are a few in there which I yeah I, I completely agree with Ratchet and Clank. I completely agree with Psychonauts. I completely agree with Deathloop. Uh, actually, not completely with Deathloop, but I I don't mind it being there. Um, it's clearly a pretty fantastic game. Yep. Um, but yeah, Metroid Dread and no, never played it. But no, Resident Evil played it. No, uh, it takes two. Again, I don't think much has come out in that sort of genre, so it's 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 kind of the the, the one for the year in that sort of space of gaming. Yeah. So maybe they're just giving it because it's like I don't know, it was cute and no one really mm. did it that year. Well, uh, yeah, quite well. I mean, I I, I, like, I, sh- I was just like, sh- sorry, buddy. <laughs> no, no, I was, I was just, I was just going to say, like, maybe it shouldn't be up there, but I, I can't say it as much as you can. Um, yeah, I, I was, I was just saying, I am glad it's there in a sense because I'm glad that this sort of like co-op game, because you can't play this game solo, you have to play co-op, and so I'm glad that that sort of game, well, that's a cool thing to do. So I'm glad that that sort of game did get the critical claim that it did. I didn't love it as much as everyone else did. I did like it, but I, I you know, but overall, I am, I'm happy it's here. So you know, um, but then what would you, interestingly, what would you? replace let's say it takes two resident evil village and metroid actually or maybe just one because thinking of three on the fly is a bit rough what 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 would you replace it with aside from forza so for forza's on the list oh death store we've we've not yeah death store okay that's all i would give like a nine out of ten this game was just so solid music was incredible loved the art boss design was awesome didn't drag at all the story was really like nuanced, kind of cool. Not, it wasn't like over the top in your face. Loved it. Mm-hmm. The death for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, Especially sort of in terms of it being a similar sort of, I guess, scale as a game like It Takes Two in terms of the company it was made by and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it probably could be a direct replacement for that um, without it knocking off a AAA title. Um, yeah, I yeah. can see that. And obviously, I haven't played Deathloop because I don't have a PS5, and obviously, I'm not gonna. I'm trying to not be biased because it's an Xbox game studio. But I loved Arcane, bro. Like I've loved them since Dishonored, you know. So Arcane, I'm great. I'm, I'm glad they get this sort of recognition. And Deathloop, let's face it, is pretty unique. Um, it did get very good reviews, mm. so I think that you know, I'm not surprised to see it here. And uh, I'm glad Arcane gets recognition. So that that yeah, because they don't always get they don't always get the recognition they deserve in terms of sales. So it's nice to see them up there, just in terms of just straight up recognition right for mm. for, for their efforts yeah um, so yeah it's nice to see psychonauts 2 definitely deserves to be on this list um that game was mm-hmm. fantastic um i had a few few issues with it here and there but overall it was like an 8.5 experience so um i was really really happy with that um for me but obviously it scored like 90 or 89 or something um yep yeah, i just really feel like forza horizon 5 should have got this and it's like if not this year like when 
yeah, you know, like it's what because this game series has had last year Forza Horizon Four, not last year, last entry Forza Horizon Four got ninety two, Forza Horizon Three had like ninety one, you know, and it's like when are we, hello, like it's, yeah. I know it's just like I and I know from what I've heard, it seems like the timing of Forza Horizon was a bit awkward when it when it like came out versus when the cutoff had to be when the panel had to send in their submissions. Like they didn't have as much time oh, I see. or they couldn't go back and change it because maybe that wasn't made clear, but it's like, ultimately I'm a bit tired of making excuses for like why these games aren't put in here. And you can't, you just can't help but think that it's being docked because it's not, because it's a car game and it's not a story game or it's not like a classical, mm-hmm. you know, action adventure game. It's like, it's just stupid because it's like, if we're going to try and if we are actually going to try and appreciate the medium, we need to try and look at things beyond just like Hollywood clones. Right. Yeah. Um, and I know it takes two isn't necessarily that I know Metroid Dread isn't necessarily that, um, but it just, it do- doesn't feel right. It don't feel right, man. It's the highest scoring game of the fucking year. And I did, I don't, by the way, I crunched the numbers on this. So I don't know if you, I went on this whole tirade on Twitter where I like, <laughs> I, 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 so since the inception of, of the game Awards in 2014, I went back and I looked at all of the scores um throughout the years not including so this is the, this is my criteria um not including remakes not including remasters um and that are on a triple a scale um mm-hmm. there so i looked at each year the highest rated game on open critic every time the highest rated open critic game of that year has ended up on this list there's only one exception to that, which was in 2014 and the first year, which was um, Super Smash Bros. Wii U and 3DS. You know, they did the one. Okay. That was yeah, the yeah. only exception. That game was the highest rated game of the year, um, but it didn't get into this category. That's the only other time that this has happened. Other than that, wow. every single year when the, when the highest rated game ends up on the um, game of the year list. And it's just, I think it's so fucking dumb that Forza Horizon doesn't end up here because this team just pumps out. It's just like, when? Like, when? <laughs> like, for God's sake, like this, this was the year. Like, there there was no... Like, it was the only game to breach into the 90s. You know? Uh-huh. And, like, it didn't have... It didn't have stiff competition in terms of the numbers, you know, in terms of the actual review numbers. But, yeah, man. just It's plus, just a bit uh, Yeah, plus also, just score aside, just, just the... The, the appeal of it right 10 million players in a week like I, I mean it's it's doing something even outside of official reviewer scores it's it's even incredibly stupidly popular among the public yeah and and they all love it too so it's it's so weird it's so weird it's it's kind of a mediocre list this year i'm gonna be honest um, about fifty percent of them probably shouldn't be there on on the on their list this year. Um, so yeah, it's a bit it's a bit lame. It's a bit lame. Um, yeah. So there is that, and that is a shame. But Forza will win best racing game again, and we'll just go back to pretending it's not like a masterpiece, and it's in a league of its own in its own genre. So that's fine. Um, yeah, great. Okay, on to the next ship. Um, Phil, I mean, we 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 kind of touched on this before, but like, there, there's been Phil have had a, Phil has had a couple of um, interviews over the last few weeks, and he's talked about the whole Bethesda thing and the anniversary. Um, and start uh, Elder Scrolls has come up a few times, um, and he essentially said that it's just coming to Xbox and PC, and he's said things like, you know, I'm not doing this isn't being done to take games away from other people it's just the way our strategy is kind of working to put it on games pass um and obviously we've had this whole problem with people not being able to accept <laughs> that bethesda games are going to be exclusive um oh i will describe definitely won't be it's too big they're leaving money on the table sorry buddy um it's not. and that is you know as much as it as much as it does suck for those out there who have like you know a history of playing these on their on their other platforms, which is just PlayStation, um, this is good for me, right? And I know mm-hmm. that might sound a bit. And it's coming to Games Pass. I don't have to drop full full price on it. It's Elder Scrolls. I know it's going to be a banger. It's going to like hit or raise the bar for open world um, fantasy games. You know, um, mm-hmm. 
It's in the universe that I love. And um, it's going to be fully optimized for my platform. And I think that's yep. okay. It's okay to be excited for something to be exclusive. I, and I, yeah, and like I said, I do empathize with those who will now have to play it on a different platform. But um, I'm happy that it's going to be like fully optimized and run the best on, on my system. Yeah. I Sorry. agree. I don't feel like you should feel guilty for that. Um, well, it's just this whole thing, isn't they... it? It's just the whole thing with like exclusivity and like the pros and cons yeah. and like the fucking the bullshit. But they it? they can say all this sort of stuff about fucking God of War, Ragnarok, and Spider Man Two, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, we all we all have our big hitters. Um, you know, it's just it only feels like it it it's harsher for Elder Scrolls because Elder Scrolls is, has been around for so long and accessible on all platforms for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, starting on PC, of course, only. Um, so, you know, that's why it feels like a bit more of a sting, but really the principle is the same. So, just suck it up, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's still, it is, you know, yeah, yeah, it is what it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is, there should be no doubt at this point that any of these new big pillar games from Bethesda are coming to any other platforms. Like, yes, you're going to get Skyrim 10th anniversary. Yes, Quake remastered. Like, you know, uh, like, yes, you're not going to have Fallout 76 or ESO pulled off your system, but I mean, anything going forward, any big new releases that doesn't really have a contract. So, you know, Deathloop or uh, what was it called? Ghost, Ghost Wire. Um, yeah. It's going to be Xbox PC and, you know, it's get it into your skulls because this conversation is getting very very fatiguing <laughs> yeah just i'm sorry get it into your skulls if you like if you like the elder scrolls if you like your fallouts if you like any of your games made by arcane just get a fucking pc or get an xbox because that's just what's happening unfortunately yeah so yep 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 absolutely okay there is some bits and bobs that um that has happened over the last few weeks that um, I'm going to omit for today um, just because the show's dragging and I don't want our delivery to start getting <laughs> like porridge um, and I don't want you guys to get <laughs> um, so becoming a Metroid Dread podcast am I right? Yeah and it's mostly it's, <laughs> it's mostly rumour <laughs> stuff there's been rumours about 1 versus 100 returning and some project names um, around some of the studios but stuff like this always comes back like these new stories will pop back up when we have more information so I think I'll just come back to it when that does happen um, considering mm-hmm. the amount of Halo we've been talking about today. Um, other than that, uh, there is um, a uh, Xbox uh, update coming out, you know, a dashboard update or whatever. Um, I don't know when it's going live, because I actually I do want to try it. Try it. Um, and in that update, uh, they've mentioned color filters, so, so colorblind modes on, on like a system level, um, audio settings, um, accessibility feature tags, and more. I don't know why they didn't have this in the title because the the best part of this for me, I I guess maybe it's a bit more of a niche thing is that they're finally doing a controller firmware update for the um, Xbox elite wireless controller series two and the adaptive controller, which was to give it the dynamic latency input Uh, for those unaware the controllers that came with the series S X and S. So the one that has the little share button on it, um, that had a bit of software in it called dy- dynamic latency input, which a- approximately like halved the input time from your controller to your TV. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, that hasn't been on the series, the Elite Series 2, which we both play with. Um, and I've heard really good things about it. They, they, it does feel a lot silkier and smoother. Um, so I, yeah, I'm just excited to sort of have a, have a feel with that when it does come out and see if I can notice a difference, um, especially because mm-hmm. we play high response shooters, you know, like Halo and everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It'd be nice to see how that changes. Mm. Um, and the other thing was, I haven't made a note. Well, I did make a small note. It's that the uh, cloud on console release this week as well. Um, I don't know if you gave it, give it a go. I saw one of our friends gave it a go, and I gave it a quick whirl for a game. I can't remember what game it was. Is it Forza? Yeah, it was Forza. Yeah, I booted up Forza. You so you can you can stream to your Xbox, and I think. This means, by the way, if you're still playing on an Xbox One, you can stream a Series X or S game to your Xbox One. You won't have to get a new one. Obviously, you'll be running with all the compromises of a stream. Is that, you know, a little bit more input lag, a little bit of artifacting here and there, you know, like pixel lag on the screens every now and then. Um, but generally, my experience with this was surprisingly good. Um, yep. And I think there are going to be some times where 
we want to just hop into something, but the download is going to take a couple of hours and we can just all stream it and get started straight away. You know, and I think I, that future is kind of here. I just think we're just, the opportunity just needs to come about. So mega convenience feature here, mega convenience. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. All right, well, to be honest, um, that's everything for today. Um, like I said, but there are a few bits and bobs that I have omitted um, that we'll come back to. Um, I'm not going to read through all of the backwards compatible games that have come out and the, the, the frames plus uh, the FPS boost. Um, because you can leave a link in the description to a page that has a list of all of them. So. Yeah, that's fine. I, I just don't want your ears to start bleeding. Uh, but I'm happy that we finally got um, FPS boost. That's been a long time coming. Um, I haven't actually looked at what games they're specifically for, but it looks like a, it looks like mostly older games um, for now. Um, but I, th- I love that feature, so I'm, I'm happy to see them still sort of working on it. Oh, all right, man. We did it, man. One app. That was a big catch up. That was. She talked about a lot of Halo. So much she fucking a Halo. A lot of Halo. I think it's like an hour and a half of it was Halo, if not <laughs> yeah. more. It's crazy. I mean, how could we not? How could we not? And we had to stop ourselves. I could have carried on. I could have kept going. Yeah, I know. I could have kept going. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard out here. Um, yeah. And I mean, maybe, maybe we'll do some more stuff on Halo. Maybe. It's, yeah. Yeah. We have got some things in the works outside of a, a of a podcast um sort of uh platform so um so yeah keep your eyes peeled and you know subscribe if you're uh if you're into that sort of thing if you're i'm sure there'll be both informative and funny content obviously oh, no promises God. these things are just things we're thinking about and in the works of you know we, we are busy people we do have full-time jobs so um mm-hmm. you know but yeah maybe maybe something in the future for that Maybe something in the future. Absolutely. All right, boys and girls. Um, thank you uh, so much for coming today. Um, we hope you enjoyed listening to us chat about all the Halo stuff. If you like what you heard, here, give us a like. Give us a sub. Go follow us on Twitter. I make pretty cool clips straight from my Xbox. Um, yeah. And other than that, any closing thoughts today, Timbo? No, that's that's, a, that's about it. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> He's... You summed it all okay. up. I don't. I don't like that, this throw you do. What? You sum up everything, and then you're like, "Anything else, Tim?" And then I say nothing, and then you laugh at me. No, I'm not <laughs> laughing at you. I'm just. I'm just grinning. I'm just having a okay, good time. Okay, that's fine, man. Just keep cucking me. It's fine. All right. Well, uh, turn Bye, your heating bro. on. Have a bath. <laughs> have some fizzy pop. Good night. <laughs>